<clears throat> is it streaming already? Well, I hope this is streaming already. Nice. Okay, it's streaming already. Just wait for the people to come in. Let me get a glass of water. Hmm. still believe in your eyes care what you've done in your life always be here by your side Alright, what the time?
Oh, hey. I have one viewer. Uh, oh, 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 not, not, uh, uh. By the way, let's uh, take some time. I'll start at one ten, probably. Just realized you guys can't see my face. Yeah. Circles to kick you on a storm. It's not in a sea because you don't know who you are. Circles like no scene of superstar. Better shut up and take a drink at the bar. Drink at the bar. Drink at the bar. Out of my mind, and I wonder why we wasting our time. Oh, where's my mouse? Don't tell me what to do. Get you out of my mind, and I wonder why we wasting our time. Come on, tell me what to do. 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 Get you out of my mind, and I wonder why we wasting our time. And let me bring this down. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I'm just gonna keep chat on one side. So if anyone decides to join, they can type. Alright, so it's uh one ten already. Um I need to get this build going because the build is not gonna build itself. So uh let's just start with a few couple pointers. Um uh, so the common myth is that uh building a PC is very difficult, but uh the building part is actually pretty simple. It's just that the uh, part selection is a little bit more intricate and uh, nuanced. Um, the building part of it, uh, you don't really need that much of tools. All you need is just a couple of screwdrivers, uh, one Phillips head, and uh, one flat head. Or if you have something like this, which is a switchable head kind of uh, screwdriver. 
and you probably might need some uh, hand sanitizer which is uh, essential if you want to clean any uh, parts of uh, let's say for example thermal paste and probably you need some tissue papers to wipe it off uh, other than that you might need a pen knife to open up the packaging uh, quite important if you need it uh, any tools along the line you might need some twist ties if you don't have any um, uh, cable management stuff so that might come in handy and this is my mouse for the streaming and yeah i think we can uh start with the build right now ain't no build gotta build itself Woo! all right so the important thing uh that we want to do first on is to uh open up the packaging so obviously uh <laughs> So the top process here is to uh, take out the motherboard and uh, try to assemble as much as you can on the motherboard itself and also test it external of the case because you don't want to chuck anything into the case uh, before actually testing it. So you want to make sure that everything works before you put it in. So that kind of uh, reduces the uh, uh, issues if you want to debug it in the case itself. So let's take it out. Uh, all right. So this board is the um, MSI Pro Z690A Wi-Fi DDR4. So this is the DDR4 variant of this board. There's a DDR5 variant of this board, but uh, DDR5 RAMs are pretty expensive right now. So uh, we opted for the uh, DDR4 variant. It comes with Wi-Fi, so it comes with uh, antennas. Yeah. So uh, I will be installing this later, but uh, we don't really need it. Uh, it comes with uh, two SATA cables, DDR cables. Yeah, we won't be needing it for this uh, build because there's no hard disk to uh, connect it to or any SATA uh, devices. So I'll just put it back in. Comes with an IO shield. Doesn't come with any uh, integrated IO shield over here. So uh, we will need this for the case. So I'll just leave this out. Um, hmm. This looks like a standoff of sorts. Or probably for the M2 SSD. So I'll keep this up for now. Driver disk. Uh, we don't really have a disk drive, so this is not really needed. Uh, oh, this looks more for the SSD. So I have no idea what the first one does. Oh, there's two of them. All right. Uh, I guess I'll just leave one out for now. Did it? Did it? Quick installation guide. Oh, what's this? Thank you for choosing MSI. Oh, okay. Yeah, I totally can register this. All right. I'm noticing something strange, which is this thing doesn't come with manual. It comes with a quick installation guide though. Uh, but no manual, which is uh, quite concerning for those who uh, do not know anything about PC building and wanted to build their own first rig, but doesn't come with a manual. So, well, that's going to be a problem. But uh, I see that uh, we can get through it. should be quite simple if you know where to connect the uh, cables and stuff. Uh, oh, right. right. So a couple things out of the box. Uh, pretty standard stuff. Parts all under the uh, tray that holds the motherboard. Uh, doesn't come with manual though. So that's one of the huge con here. So... Not a lot of hand holding here, unless if you want to check out the manual online, which I might have to use my phone for that if I encounter any issues down the road. So, problem number one. All right. So what I like to do, right, when building uh, desktops, is to place the motherboard on the box itself, because this, uh, because like behind the board, right, there's a lot of pins. Let me open up. Uh. Right. So uh, if you guys can see, there's a lot of pins like behind there, so it juts out. Uh, 
so I don't want to put it on the table where uh, there's like pressure points will be on the pins itself so you put it on the box uh, because the box is more of a soft uh, material so everything will be mounted on the box itself gives you a stable uh, building platform all right so now we have this uh properly set up um, hmm. yep okay this is good this is good right so even without the manual right if you are uh if you're familiar with all the uh, front eye opens you can actually see them um, pretty clear there are markings on the board itself so uh, if you can see i'm aiming this correctly there are some diagrams over here to tell you um, which which pin to actually plug in like the uh, power button the reset button speakers and stuff all on this uh, headers over here yeah. so it's pretty clear if you are unsure of uh, where to put it in uh, you can just follow the um, pinouts over here. It's actually pretty helpful. So without a manual, uh, I guess we can uh, carry on. So the first thing we're gonna put in will be the uh, processor. So I'm gonna cut this open. So what I have here is a i5 12600K. Uh, so this is the K skill. Uh, it's overclockable uh, or overclock uh, unlocked and uh, it doesn't come with a heatsink itself so that's why I have this uh, bad boy here which I will show you later once I put this thing in I take you on a ride if you can keep a secret alright okay comes with a little uh, handhold here for you to pull it out pretty cool I've been building a lot of uh, AMD builds now, so this is like my uh, super long uh, foray back into Intel again. My previous Intel build was 4th gen, and now we're at 12th gen, so yeah. Uh, blocks wise, okay, easily slidable. If I'm not wrong, we can slide this thing out, can we? Eh, eh, not really. nice pc building and i have no idea how to operate a box ah okay i see so if you can see the construction of the box uh, let me just angle the mic over here so if you can see the construction of the box uh, is there's like two flaps on the side over here and over here basically those are what holding uh, those are what is holding the uh, two pieces of cardboard together yeah so you just need to flip them down and pull it out nothing too hard Oh, oh, oh. Right, so you see uh, I've uh, put one tab out so you can actually open it up already I can slide it out already so there's no need to open up the other flap if you're unsure uh, most likely not gonna do it mid-air because if this thing falls uh, it's quite expensive for something to fall like that so take note alright, let's secure it back now we have the box intact we might have to put the uh, plastic covering back so that will be done later all right all right so i'll put it on one side Ooh, ah. mm. right so from uh from my past experience the package size or at, at least the cpu chip uh it's not as big as uh, it used to be uh it used to be smaller in size so this is now uh, increased in size by quite a lot. I think the uh, usual package size was around this size. It's more of a squarish one rather than a rectangular one. Uh, differences in a uh, different uh, advancement in technology, I suppose. Right. So before taking this out, we have to remove a cover that is on the uh, motherboard. This is uh, inherent for all uh, Intel uh, uh, processors and uh, motherboards. So there's always a shield covering it because the uh, LGA pins are not on the CPU itself they are on the board itself uh, just slight differences from um, Intel and AMD so let's remove this there's a little tiny flap over here if I'm not wrong 
Alright, so you release the uh, retention bracket and you try to take this out if I'm not wrong. It's supposed to pop right up, by the way. Yeah, so there's some like tiny little clips that clips onto the bracket itself. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Alright, let me have a look. Alright, so there's four clips on this thing. So I'm not sure whether you can see it. So there's one here, one here, two on the top. Yeah. So it clips onto the bracket itself. So you just need to pop it right off. Yeah. Remember to keep this because uh for arming um uh Intel motherboards, uh or Intel uh, processors, motherboard, uh you need this for army, so you need to keep this somewhere safe. So retention bracket is up. Alright. Let's pop this processor out of its case. Alright. So uh for Intel, right? Uh they actually uh have these holes for you to take up the uh, CPU from. So it's on the sides. So I mean follow the design, I guess. Alright. Okay. Woo. Woo. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, so for Intel chips, there's like a little arrow on the side. Not sure whether you guys can see it with the light. Yeah, there's a little arrow here. The rest of the angles are all dots. So the arrow here is supposed to align with the uh, arrow on the uh, retention bracket itself. I can show it to you. I have to put this back. Uh, let me just put this retention bracket on just to give you guys a good demo over here all right so there's one uh, arrow over here so you just need to align the arrow with the arrow so that you know which orientation the uh, cpu is in so that you don't chuck it into a different orientation and the uh the cpu gets wrecked all right let's put this down Right, so once the CPU is down, put back the uh, retention bracket. Yeah. Yep. It shakes a little, but uh, it's no big deal. It's supposed to do that anyway. It's supposed to give some uh, space for. Um... All right. So once you're done, press down the uh, securing lever, and the thing should be. Secure in place. So now you can see I can just take this whole thing up and it won't fall out. Yeah. So CPU is in place right now. So the next step we want to do is to install the cooler. Uh, before that, keep your stuff. And also keep the uh, retention, no, not retention bracket, the uh, CPU cover, CPU socket cover. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. Come on, get in. Uh-huh. 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 Alright, so there's a sudden shape for you to actually put this back in. Uh uh-huh. I place this wrongly. Uh -huh. What? Uh, this is very interesting. Oh, okay. I put it on the opposite side. All right. 
Okay, no, this makes much more sense. Okay. All right, flap up. Keep the cover within here for easy storage. And chuck it back into the box. Easy. Alright. So we're done with the CPU. All good. We can place this box somewhere else. On the floor, perhaps. Alright, so what I have here is RAM. But I'm not going to install it yet. After I install the cooler. Alright, so maybe I'll put this one side. Talk you through what I have here. So what I have here is a... Thermal right, uh, PLS Assassin 120. So it comes with uh, two fin stacks. So what if... Uh, uh, just to explain a little bit. So two fin stacks means that uh, the fins... The aluminium fins for the cooling. Uh, you have actually two of them. So it's like a fin tower. Uh, according to the uh, images right here. And it also comes with 120mm uh, 120, uh, 120 fans, so there's two of it, one in the middle and one at the front. Or if you prefer, you can put one at the back too, uh, it's customizable. So it's, it's just a little uh, metal uh, retention uh, wire that holds the fans in. But I'll show that to you in a moment once I open this. All right. so this thing also comes with um, six uh, heat pipes. So as you can see, it's all... Uh, there's six heat pipes on the um, on the bottom, and there's a nickel nickel plated uh, soldered copper base. Now there's a a huge mouthful. So this uh this uh copper base will be in contact with the CPU, so that uh the heat gets transferred to the heat pipes, which get transferred to the heat uh the fin stack, and they will be cooled by the fans itself. So this should be pretty self-explanatory. Conduction physics, yeah. Alright, so let's open this up. If you guys can see this. Alright, opens up with a thin cardboard piece. Put this one side. So within the uh, package, you can see there's a few things uh, neatly packed. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see this quite clearly. Because the camera is a little bit on the side. Alright, so comes with two fans, which are packaged... Uh, separately from the uh, main fin stacks. Uh, these are WPM PWM fans 120 uh, 0.2 amps uh, 1550 RPM. All right. Looking good. Looking good. All right. So we will need the fans for later, but uh, I'm just going to store this in right here because of the uh, plastic packaging. All right. So uh, let's take this out. So what is being fitted uh, into the middle of the fin stacks in the packaging is just this little box and some uh, instructions on how to uh, install the heatsink, which uh, I might need later. So uh, this is just a plastic uh, holder of sorts, I guess. So within this box, uh, so you see, it's pretty neatly uh, packed. Although I feel like I'm doing some product review. Uh, okay, so this box actually includes all the uh, brackets that you might need when installing. So, um, the one that I bought actually came with a uh, LG 1700, which is the, uh, uh, what's that called? The CPU package that the uh, new Intel chips have. So, um, the mount, the bracket for this will fit the motherboard. So if you don't have this bracket, uh, you might not be able to install the uh, cooler. So it also comes with a previous one, which is the LGA 115X and 1200. So I'm not sure if you can see. Maybe I'll take it out. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the current one, the LGA A1700. Right. And oh, right, this is the previous one, the LGA. Let me see if I can get this in the screen here. Right, the LGA uh, fifteen. It's not fifteen. It's a. Uh, 
11 5x and also 1200 yeah so there are differences to the brackets as the mounting holes are a little bit off yeah they don't quite fit that well uh, as you can see there's some like yeah so slight differences uh, that's why you need to have a new bracket for the new package size so yeah that's why all right so we won't be needing the um 11 5x and the 1200 one so i'm just gonna put it back in all right uh, it also comes with uh, the uh, metal brackets. I think this is to yeah, this is to connect the uh, back face bracket to the top, which will be connected to the uh, heatsink itself. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. I'm not really sure how to explain this. So uh, it comes with the uh, AM4 one, which is the AMD one. Uh, that you don't really have to change the uh, back bracket because uh, it's already provided on uh, any uh, AMD compatible motherboards. But for um, yeah, but for Intel, uh, the additional bracket is needed. So I might need this. Well, let's have a look at the instructions and find out. But I'm pretty sure I'll need one pair of this. Then. What else? There are spacers and screws which will be needed to connect into the heatsink itself. There's uh, multiple spacers actually. There's different colors. So there's blue, there's red and black. So I'm pretty sure, yep, it's stated here. One is for AM4, the other one is for 11.5x and uh, 1200. So I probably won't need these two. Probably I'll just need these, but uh, it's a little bit weird because the these don't come with screws. So I might have to uh, salvage from the mm, the eleven five x ones since they are Intel anyways. So the screws should be the same. It's just that it's not provided in the uh, seventeen hundred. Right. So within here we also have a uh, fan splitter. Yeah, so one on the motherboard, and this two goes to the fan. But uh, looking at the motherboard, I don't think we need these because there should be enough uh, fan haters for me to connect uh, both onto the board itself, both fans onto the board itself. So let's keep this. This will come in handy if uh, your board is uh, running out of fan haters. And lastly, in this bag, we have uh, what I talked about earlier, where the uh, it's like the wires holding the fans onto the fin stack itself so yeah so it's more like a hook and clip on type deal yeah so this two will hook onto the uh, fans itself and then uh over here we just hook on onto the fixing uh fin stack i mean so i will need these i just put this on one side it's okay i might need the screws here okay Well, like I said, uh, PC building isn't all that complicated. It's just tedious. As you can see, my table is already uh, quite messy right now. All right, so main style of this uh, whole box, it's the fin stack. Okay, so this is actually quite a hefty beast. Uh, it's copper plated. No, not copper plated. It's copper, nickel plated, aluminum fin stack. And comes with a black top finish. Yeah. Maybe I should take this out. The packaging is pretty well done though. Is everything uh, contained in their own box. And there's a pack of silica gel in there too, just to keep it dry. So let's put this in. So as you can see, this is like eh, quite big, right? As compared to like the size of my hands, right? So I can hold one just in the palm of my hand. And it's also quite long, so yeah so for this this is actually quite a high tdp uh cooling uh, f uh solution for your cpu so uh like i always tell my clients that uh once you get one of these uh, you're kind of set for life because you can just take this out and switch it to any uh computers that you might want to build in the future right so as you can see it comes with uh 
two uh, retention screws on this side here, one here and on one on the other side. So this two will fit onto one of these uh, brackets over here. And uh, these brackets will connect to the back brackets itself. So it's like two sets of brackets. Uh, okay, I think I'm pretty much done here. I can install this down. Uh, as you can see, uh, for his things like this, they always come with a plastic film on the uh, base plate here. This is so that uh, you don't dirty it. But even if you dirty it, uh, you can clean it with some alcohol and like some tissues, uh, which I might have to do it later. Yeah. So uh, let's put this on one side. Uh, fans, I can take them out later. So you see, so far into the game, right, uh, we have yet to use any tools. But uh, this is going to be our first tool that we are going to use, which is just, well, a Phillips screwdriver. It's not that hard. Alright, so thermal paste will be needed. Uh, for this, I'll be using the MX4. Uh, uh, Arctic's MX4 uh, thermal compound. So this will be uh, bridging the gap between the heatsink and the CPU. Right. I will apply it later. So let's cap this off for now. Put it on the floor. I don't really need this or this. Well, the thing is, I know that they uh, provided me with some uh, thermal compound, but I would like to use my own because uh, sometimes if the client wants to uh, repaste, uh, they'll be able to do it. So this is more for them and not for my building. Alright, let's take a look at the instructions because uh, like all men, I'm not all knowing. Wait, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Alright. <coughs> Right, so even though you don't know how to read uh, Chinese characters, uh, everything is in Chinese because I ordered it uh, from China. It's pretty cheap. Um, oh, there's also English uh, writing on the back. Nice. See, I told you, I'm not all-knowing. I just flipped it. Right, so if you can see, uh, right, it will provide you a list of contents within the uh, package itself, uh, what you need to account for, what types of uh, connectors you should have in here. Right. Then uh, following pages, you will see uh, what's the install instructions for the different uh, types of packages you'll be using. Like this is like for AMD, and this is for the Intel 15 5X and 1200. And if you want to install it on the uh, 1700, yep, yeah, there are instructions here too. Okay. So, um, and they also give instructions for wiring. If you want to plug this into your motherboard, the uh, instructions are all here. Yeah. So if that's the case, uh, there's actually quite a lot of hand holding uh, if you just read through the manuals. It's pretty uh, self explanatory uh, instructions here. So I'm just going to do that because uh, all these things are built different and not all instructions are applicable. So having instructions, pretty good. And I'm just going to follow them. It doesn't, you know, take a lot of uh, intellect to do this actually. I, I often off my brain just to do this. Right, so I got the M here i'm guessing this is m all right what is m okay right m is the lg 1700 backplate yep oh yeah, yeah. The, the correct term is backplate so i got the backplate i'm supposed to apply it to the back of the motherboard right uh good thing is that they came with uh 3m's uh double-sided tape i suppose so they can uh, safely stick it on the back of it and not have it fall out. So um, this is the first step. Let me have a look over here. Right. So that's the first step. When the next step is N. Seventeen hundred standoff, which is the blue one. Okay. So we got that. Then I and E. I and E. Alright, so I is the Intel screw, which I have to take out from here. And E would be the Intel bracket, which is the straight one, which I can take it out here. Yeah. Alright, so these are the essential items that we may need. So when following instructions, right, try to read through all of the instructions first, before you actually do anything. 
because uh, you want to get ready the parts before you actually you know do anything on the board itself so following instructions blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so once these are being uh, mounted onto the back plate uh to my knowledge it is supposed to face up because of the uh screw over here it's supposed to screw onto the side of the uh heat sink so it's supposed to face up not face down so once we understood that we're supposed to screw on these two brackets on the back plate using the screws here apply thermal paste on the cpu and next we can secure the heat sink onto the motherboard just a simple six step instructions nothing too hard right right i hope okay then uh, the last step will be to mount on the fence which is the easiest portion of this whole thing right so with that said uh, let's start but first i need to take out the screen so well, you might need some scissors if you don't want a big hole so I am cutting the uh, 15 5x and the 1200 uh, section of this. Just a little cut because I don't want the rest to fall out. I just need the screws, not the uh, standoffs. Alright, so one out. Mm. Mm. Alright, two out. Three. and four All right so everything else in this package goes into the box because we're not using it All right so keep it ah so keep it neatly back into the box we need the standoffs i like to keep the uh ziplock bags for uh the clients because just in case if they want to put it back they can easily do so or if they can just you know watch the stream and reverse engineer this Ah, uh, getting some messages. What's up? See your pen pass. All right. Okay. All right. So, back to it first. Love is a sad side. So what we want to do is to flip this thing around. Uh, maybe I'll just put this over here. And just some little parts. Let me get some water. The water is. Ah. Hydration. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Let's flip this around. You can see that there's a uh, four holes over here, where the uh, back plate will be going through. It will be attached to the back. All right. So this is supposed to go like this. Doesn't matter the uh, orientation. Doesn't seem to, but it feels like I'm supposed to, you know, orient it so that I can read it when looking at it upright. So I'm just going to put it like that. Well, it, it, it looks good, so I'm just going to tear off the uh, adhesive and stick this on. Okay. So adhesive is just, well, double-sided tape. Uh, if need be that you are installing this on another computer, re reapply double sided tape. Okay, so now the back plate has been secured, doesn't fall. Fully secure. Then we turn it around. Uh, install the side brackets. Mm. Where's the other one? Yeah, there we go. Oh no. We need the standoffs. Yes, yes, yes. I just realized. Okay. So if you can see, uh, I just need to bring this a little bit closer. This is why we need the standoffs. 
Okay. Alright, so if you uh, can look closer, right? There are some like capacitors over here. And if we just put the uh, bracket on straight, right? It will clash together with the capacitor. That doesn't make sense, right? So the standoffs are there to, uh, you know, prop it up a little bit higher. You can see, I guess, yeah. Just to prop it up higher so that uh, it doesn't clash with all the uh, onboard components over here. Yeah. So this is how you actually, like, you know, make sense that, oh, I actually need standoffs because it doesn't make sense for me to actually put the uh, brackets on here. Just It just doesn't make sense, right? So standoffs first. I don't think there's a correct way to put the standoffs because they are, I think, manufactured to be reversible anyways. Doesn't really matter. Put them on here. Right. So one neat thing that I uh, just realized when putting down the standoffs, you can actually see that there's some markings right here, which is like, uh, I'm not sure whether this is picking up on the webcam. Right, so it's, it writes here 1700. So you know that these standoffs are for 1700. So this is like some attention to detail, uh, which I like pretty much. So now that the standoffs are in, we can install the side brackets. Uh, there's a certain strategy or a, at least a know-how on where, on which orientation to align the brackets. Because if you look at the heat sink, they're supposed to be secured on the sides. So if you want the air to blow this way, your brackets have to go perpendicular to it because the screw goes like because it goes like that, you know. So fans here, airflow here, brackets here. Good. I, I hope this is getting through, I guess. Uh, right. So put this back. Looking at the instructions, we are supposed to mount this. We're supposed to mount this facing in so it goes like it goes like that so this side will be the uh, cpu side yeah so it goes on like this and this okay screw time Uh, what I like to do is just to place the uh, screw into place first because this thing slides. There's no uh, retention feature over here. So place the screw in just so that you know everything is positioned well before you actually screw everything in. Where is the last screw? Am I like on it? Oh yeah, there we go. Then uh, I'll first uh, hand tight the um, screws over here because uh, they are pretty loose. So just to secure them in place so that they don't fall out if uh, I, I flip the board and uh, show you guys some stuff. Okay. Oh no. So I've uh, realized one problem, it's because of me not following the instructions. There are actually two uh, screw holes for the side brackets itself, and you have to be wary of uh, which hole this should actually go in, which is the outer hole. Yeah, I can show you guys this. Yeah. So there's like the outer hole, there's like two holes for the Intel platform. So you need to be wary of uh, which hole that it goes in. So I have to take out one of the screws because that is like a little bit misaligned.
Right. So if I have everything uh, in the right position, they should not uh, be slanted. They should be actually straight from one screw to the other. Even if you haven't uh, screwed them properly in yet. So let's have a look. So if you take a look at the board here, it's supposed to be straight and not slanted. Yeah. Even if you have some play on it, it will move. It will still be straight. Right? Right, so with that said, let's uh, tighten this thing up. Tighten them slowly. Don't have to go hard on one uh, screw. Uh, starting from the first. Uh, uh, go through each and every screw first. Make sure uh, they're softly tight first. Before you start tightening them uh, seriously. What you want to do is uh, make it make it firm, but not too hard that it destroys like the board itself. Because by doing so, you're tightening onto the board itself. So it might damage the board if you tighten it too hard. So what I like to do is to uh, make sure that it's softly tight. So if I use my two fingers and turn it, I can't really turn that much softly. So with that, then I'll start tightening it with more force. So, yep. Just turn until it stops moving that much. I don't really have a torque wrench or something like that, so I can't really gauge uh, how much pressure am I putting, or how much torque am I putting on the screws itself. Okay, it feels sufficiently tight, then it's not supposed to move around when you jerk it. So this is how you know that it's tight for now. Because uh, this is to secure the brackets onto the board itself. This is a hefty heat sink, so this will cause a lot of strain on the board itself because of the, uh, uh, I think, design of it. Just to retain it onto the board. And the next two things that we need to tighten up is the sides, the side screws here. So there's actually two points of uh, pressure for this. But first I want to clean the surface of the CPU because this has been left out for quite a, some time. And I just need some tissues. Well, I took more than one piece, so there we go. Okay, so what I like to do uh, when applying thermal paste would be to use a cut and spread them uh, evenly. But first, let's clean the uh, CPU itself. Let me off my fan so that I don't get any more dust. <laughs> So looking at the heat sink, right, there's also some considerations before you actually place it onto the uh, onto the board itself. As you can see, uh, the the heat pipes are orientated, um, you know, biased to one side. So the CPU will sit just below the uh, plate over here, and you can either have the heat sink more to the bottom or more to the top in in this configuration. So it can either be this. Where the heat sink is more to the bottom of the board, or it can be the other way around, which is more aligned to the top. But it also really depends on how much space you have. Like, let's say, for example, the uh, heat sink on this side is a little bit too high. So, obviously, it doesn't clear on the uh, heat pipes over here. So, you have no choice just to, you know, spin it around and orientate it more to the bottom. But it shouldn't be that much of a problem. I'll have to see what's the clearance over here. 
So before you actually jam anything down, uh, make sure you think about this. Make sure you experiment it a little bit. And, uh, you know, screw it in once you're done. So fortunately, I can uh, actually orientate this uh, bias to the top. Uh, gives me a little bit of clearance, but I think it's fine. Uh, it's not a bad idea to do it. Yep. So with some estimations, uh, this can fit. So I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, it looks like uh, there's around half a centimeter of uh, clearance between the heat sink and the fin stack. And the heat pipes, I mean. So I should, you know, I will go with this orientation. Let's clean. Alright, so what I have here is a alcohol spray. I uh, usually I'll just use a hand rub. Make sure that uh, you're using if you're using this method, uh you're using the uh, water-based one, don't use the gel-based one. Cause uh, I don't think that works that well when cleaning something. As uh some additives on the gel uh might be left all right so a little bit of spray just to make it damp is it damp yet all right so we have a alcohol damp uh tissue just wipe it down here remove the sticker or remove the protective film on the heat sink and wipe it down next is to apply the thermal paste so I'll just do it step by step, all right? So let's clean this up. Okay, CPU is clean. Uh, let's tear this protective sticker off. Take it on one side. Uh, it looks clean enough very lap it looks quite clean so um probably i don't want to touch this yeah so i'll just leave it on the side so it's fine the sticker is there to prevent any like dirt or dust on it so all right moving on to the uh, thermal paste application like i said i like to use a little cut sometimes using a piece of paper is a little bit annoying because it's more flimsy so using a piece of cut would be better Next is to get out your thermal paste. Mine is a little bit stuck, but it's okay. All right. So squeeze some onto the uh, CPU itself. I can't really do a zoom in because I want to have a stationary camera. But I'll show you guys once I apply everything and spread it out. Not really sure whether this is enough, but uh, we'll give it a shot.
All right. So let's have a look at uh, what we have here. So if you can look at this, this is a little bit evenly spread. So just a thin film of uh, thermal paste right here. This will sit in between the um, uh, heat sink and the CPU. So uh, time to install a heat sink. Let's put this down. Make sure we align it properly. Okay, so now they're aligned. Let's start screwing this down. Same rules apply for screwing down things. Just make sure you go evenly because you see, once I've uh, screwed in one side, the other side will start to pop up. So you just have to adapt and overcome. Uh, right, so this is one of the problems. Now I cannot screw the other side, I have to loosen this one side. Okay, I feel the bite. So, oh, this this bites bites my screwdriver. Nice. Use the other one. I'll screw it to the point that I can turn it with my fjord to uh, one thumb and one finger. So just keep alternating. Make sure you even out. The good thing about this is that uh, the screws right here have uh, springs on them. So even if you don't tighten them uh, hard enough, uh, the springs will do some of the work. But obviously you don't have it too loose. Okay. What the hell was that? Oh, that's hot. Right. So if this thing is secured well enough, uh, let me just on the fan first because it's getting way too hot in this Singaporean weather. Alright, so the good thing is we can have the fans on for the rest of the build. Good stuff. Right. So if the uh, fans are being installed, pro uh, I mean the heatsink is being installed properly, you can actually take up the whole thing using just the heatsink itself. Like so, easy, yeah. Because the mount is supposed to stay uh, strong enough so that it can hold its own weight and doesn't tear off on the motherboard. This is completely safe if and only if, if you uh, install this properly and correctly. But it's still quite a hefty piece of uh, hardware right here. So I'm just gonna put it down and install something else. Right. So the good thing about um, this orientation, as opposed to uh, the more bias to the bottom side of the board, would be that um, I have to take this up again. Right. Let me have a go. Right. So if you can see down here, this is the M2 slot. So if this is more biased to the bottom, I might not have access to uh, replacing this or adding any M2 here which uh, means that this screw might be uh, obstructed because of the heat sink yeah so these are some of the uh, considerations you have to put uh, into a bit when you're installing stuff on the robot so whether uh, the components are accessible uh, whether or not like um, when you're installing this um, do you have clearance stuff like that yeah so these are some of the considerations because uh, my client wants an M2 SSD right here and I have yet to install it. And let's say for example if this uh, M2 SSD is uh, uh, broken or dead, uh, maybe sometimes down the road touch wood, um, he will be able to uh, replace this easily, just unscrew this too, without having the uh, heatsink obstructing his uh, his line. Yeah. So this is one of the considerations when, when you're building. Right. So let me put this down again. 
I have no idea how much, uh, how many times I have taken this up and put this back down within one session. Okay, so if that's it, next we need to, or at least we want to keep all our stuff first, just to keep our workplace tidy. And okay. Okay, there are some things we can throw away. We can keep and not use anymore. So we don't need the uh, heatsink manual anymore. The spare parts. And we can keep everything back into the box. So let me take them out and keep them. The whole idea of uh, PC building is more of like, oh, you have to be organized and, you know, keep all your stuff in check more of the actual building itself it's more of a management thing uh, let me just keep this So fit everything nicely back into the uh, box itself. It came out like this, it's gonna go back in like this. Except for, you know, missing the heatsink and fans and, and all of that. Alright, so let's take out the fans because we're gonna install the fans later. Fans come into their own um, individual pack plastic. A little bit wasteful, but I guess... Uh, styrofoam and everything, am I right? Well, this is not actually styrofoam, this is like foam, foam. Fans are pretty uh, run of the mill. I can't really comment that much, I don't do fan testing. But for applications such as this, uh, it should be fine. Um, okay, one pro to add on would be this uh, small vibration, anti-vibrational pads. So if you take a closer look at this, on this side, you will see like this rubber pad over here so if you place it on a case or anything uh, it's less likely to shake up your whole entire case so these are dampeners yeah well on the other side there's nothing much because mm, this is where the air will come out so you most likely will be melting this on the case if you want this for an exhaust yeah but i'm pretty sure you can remove these pads and paste it on the back let me just have a quick check. Back to the side. I don't think you can remove the pads, but uh, it's good to know that for exhaust, you're all uh, catered for. But if you want to do like an intake, like if you want to stick this onto the front of the case, uh, you can't really do that. But then again, this fan is actually for the heatsink itself, so. You only do it for the exhaust, so you're slapping this, this side, where the air comes out, onto the heatsink. So it won't vibrate the heatsink. And that's about it. So, one consideration about this is the uh, cable length. It's not that long, so you can't really mount it effectively on a, um, on a case, if you wanted to. Because usually cases are much bigger than they are required to be. That's, that's what I would say. So, fans are out. Let's keep everything back in. This is from the inside. Okay. Alright, so we're done with the uh, heat sinks. So, I can keep this somewhere. This is a little bit weird because it keeps popping out. But. There's no issue. Alright, so we have uh, done with... We are done with two boxes right now. Fans. And I have to throw this away. 
Okay, so like I said, uh, air comes out from the side where they are like support structures. Yeah, so when you see the uh, skeletons here, uh, this is where the air comes out because the, the fan will spin this way and it will scoop the air and push it out this way. So the side without the, the skeleton frame thingy is where the air comes in. Yeah, and the side with the uh, skeleton frame is where the air comes out. So, to plan this properly, we have to take a look at the uh, fan haters on the motherboard itself. And fortunately for us, the fan haters on this motherboard is quite gathered together. At the top, it will be labeled as CPU fan. But there's also other fan haters like system fan, pump fan. Pump fan is mostly for your water cooling setup if you have a pump. Yeah, but I'll be using the um, system fans, more likely. There's also another system fan at the uh, back over here. This is more for the uh, exhaust fan at the, at the back of the case. Yeah, so it'll be easily connected to here. Oh, this board is actually quite insane. There's a lot of fan haters. Alright, let's, let's walk you guys through the uh, fan haters. It's actually quite impressive. So let's count up. Okay. Right. So there's one CPU fan heater. There's one pump fan heater. There's one system fan heater. Two system fan heater. Three. Uh the back one. Four. Four. And down here there's five and six. So there's six fan haters on this board itself. So you, well, technically you don't have to really worry about uh, you running out of uh, fan haters for this one. So okay, let's install. Uh, most likely I will be choosing the top system fan hater and the CPU fan hater uh, for these two fans. I'm not expecting my client to uh, actually adjust it based on. Um, the CPU uh, usage or CPU temperature. So maybe I'll just put the, the one in the middle to be connected to the CPU fan. So if the system regulates the fan speed, uh, it will be catered properly, at least for the middle fan. So cables wise, uh, I want to minimize the amount of cable that I have to rock across the board and to be seen so i'm just uh, planning it appropriately let's see if this works if it rocks properly then i will use this orientation sometimes you can just wrap the uh, cables around the fan like like what i do so this is the cable itself and i just wrap it around so you can just put it like that or you can always like you know leave it hanging and then like tie them up after but uh, it's quite unsightly which i don't recommend so the middle fan is uh, done in that orientation. The outer fan, yeah, most likely will be using the same strategy. If I can use this, and it will go somewhere here. But here's where the uh, problem lies. If we were to put this like this, right? We won't have the uh, clearance for the ramps itself. Yeah, so this is where the uh, issue of this thing lies. But we can always uh, orientate our fence a little bit higher so that we have uh, clearance for the ramps below. So in this case, we should install the ramps first. So let's have a look at that. Right. So what I have here is the uh, ballistic, uh, crucial ballistic gaming RGB uh, variant. And these ramps are of um 3200 uh, megahertz for the speed yeah not really a fan of um rgb but um i guess this is the trend now am i right pen knife All right, let's open this up Yeah, come in this uh, plastic case. Pretty nice. Hmm. 
Uh, let's take a look at the serial numbers. Mm. Okay, it doesn't say much about the serial numbers. Uh, but let me just take a quick photo for this. Monday, no. Nice. Nice. Okay. I got the pictures. Good. Mm, right. So we are installing the RAMs. So if you have yet to notice, or if you are a new builder, you don't know much about RAMs. RAMs actually have. Uh, different sized teeth teeth tooth 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 mm. so one side is actually longer than the other so this is the longer part you can see yeah so longer shorter and it has to correspond to whatever is on the board itself yeah so if you put it in the wrong uh, orientation you might damage the board or even damage the rim So looking at the board, uh, let me have a look. Interesting. All right. So looking at the board, the longer portion of it should be on the top and the shorter one should be at the bottom. So follow. It's like Lego. Do kids even play Lego these days? Hey, hey, my boy. Nice. Oh, oh, oh no. Is this supposed to happen? What? Uh. Problem, problem occurred. I can't get the packaging out. Ah, uh, okay, got it. Finally. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I can see that this is a uh, intended design. Oh, might be better if I flip them around. Cause the tray is on the other side, right? So once you open up, uh, they have this uh retaining tray thingy over here, as opposed to the other side. So. Make sure you don't spill it. Uh, the, the issue with not having a manual is that I have no idea which one to slot it in first. Let me have a look. Nice. So it's basically written on the board or it's printed on the board that uh, I'm supposed to put in. Uh, I'm not really sure whether you guys can see if I take it up. Uh, it's very small down here. Can, can you guys see this? Yeah. So this thing will actually say, oh, okay, you have four dip slots, which is the RAM slots. And you're supposed to insert like the second one and the fourth one first. So uh, since we're doing a two sticks of RAM uh, configuration here, we will start with those. So see, you don't really need a manual sometimes. Because it will be printed on the board and it's pretty intuitive. But it might not be uh, that good for uh, first time builders. Yeah. I just noticed my mic setup being uh, a little bit slipping. Ah, uh, give me a while, I might have to readjust this. Damn it.
Got it. Okay, this should work well. Let me just do like a small mic check, see if uh, I'm still audible. Mic test? Yeah, I'm, I'm still audible. Pretty good. Okay. Phone. Good. Right, so RAMs. We're going to install the RAMs right now. Only this would be a better view because the camera is over there. Let's move this up. I don't think we need the uh, scissors. Probably not. Right, so this is the important one. No? Really? Hmm. I can see myself. Yeah, you're my boy. Alright, let me just share this link. Oh, I spent one hour on this rig already. And we're still here, but I'm explaining stuff as we go, so... I, I guess it works. Right, back to the build. Oh, let's build this up. So back to RAMs, let's install the RAMs. Make sure they're of the correct orientation. We're going for the second one. And the fourth one. So open these clips. Clips are important, it holds the uh, RAM in place. Hey, how's the building? Uh, we have yet to reach uh, on stage. And we are around like what an hour in probably right ramps so make sure you slide them in there are tracks on the sides right i know it's all black and it's like quite hard to see but uh, there, there are tracks on the side so just slide them in and uh don't be afraid to push them down they're supposed to click uh make sure you don't have them slanted they're supposed to slide in like i said make sure the teeth are aligned there's a little notch in the middle or somewhere near the middle. Uh, then you just need to press it down. You're supposed to hear a click. Well, you guys can't hear the click, I mean. Yep. So once you hear the clicks on both ends, you're good to go. You can give it a little jiggle. Okay. So that's the first RAM installed. Make sure the uh, notch is aligned and one side first. Get a click, the other side, click, right? So they're supposed to be flush. Okay. It's a little bit of counterintuitive if I were to put the fans here and then the RGB, you know, shows up. But my client doesn't like RGB, so I can turn it off. All's good. Okay, so we're done with another box. Yeah. So we are down three boxes and build is going well. How does this go? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Nice, someone just commented that uh, they have the same uh, total flash. Nice. Alright, the box down. Okay, so this is where we can actually install the fans. Like, seriously. Because now the rams are in, we can, you know, put the fans. Another consideration is that uh, once I put the fans down here, if the rams have uh, any issues, I might have to remove the fans, which is a pain in the butt. Um, but let's install the middle one first. Where is my hooks? Right, so hooks, 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 hooks. So hooks, if you can see, you're supposed to hook onto the holes on the side and clip onto the head thing on the back. Yeah. Not really sure this is the correct hole to hook. Should be the one at the... Oh, let me just try. No, I'm wrong. Yep, I'm wrong. Yeah, it's the one at the back. So you hook on here. And let's try that again. No, I'm I'm still wrong. What the what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of lead me to believe that I'm supposed to stretch this. Yeah, I'm supposed to stretch this so it goes onto the hole at the front. Yeah, a little bit of OCD. This is a little bit higher than the other side, but I can easily adjust it. Okay, so this side is a little bit lower, so I'm just gonna make it flush with the top. Still a little bit lower, but I can just push it up, it should be fine. Push this down. Feels good. This is good right so i will go here nice because i'm anticipating that there will be an exhaust fan so it will not do me much good if i place the fan behind because the clearance is that close so there's no point i'm just gonna put it at the front a little bit blocking the uh, access to the uh rams here but this is easily removable so i don't really have that much of a concern. Alright, let's hook them up. Shut the down and come back to life. Get some not right ways. I'm gonna put this a little bit higher. Uh, just to give the uh, rams a little bit of uh, breathing space. So that if this thing actually vibrates, it doesn't hit the ram. Close-up camera? No, man. I need some sponsors to get a close-up camera. I 
wonder if I can just bring the camera closer. But uh, this is gonna screw up the whole setup for later, anyways. Uh, let me see what I can do. Uh, I will let you guys see what's the uh, like end result of this because uh, this is like a little bit annoying for me to close up. Right, so this side is a little bit uh this side is a little bit lower so i need to bring it up by like one or two pins All right, so this thing is set. All right, so you guys want to close up, right? Hey, what's this? Hey, 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 hey. It's all about investments, right? <laughs> you guys can sponsor me if you want. All right, so give you guys a close up. Is this close enough? Is is this? Is... All right, so Ram sits here, gives a little bit of clearance down here uh lighting is not that yeah lighting is on the side so see all right so the front fan will be a little bit uh, elevated up just to give uh, some clearance for the uh, rams at the front then uh let me see yeah 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 that's about it cable management is just like that so uh it's nothing much it doesn't reveal a lot of cables so i would say uh, all in all quite a neat uh management right here perhaps i can rob this through uh this uh, little thin uh wire down here uh yeah sure i'll just route it there but all in all uh this is what you get this is a pretty beefy uh setup right here and my fingers hurt because of pins at the back let's rob this through yeah this is neater all right so one of them uh goes to the uh, cpu i gotta take this up all right so one of them goes to the uh, cpu one one of them goes to the system one the middle one is for the pump uh for the pump so it will goes to the uh water cooling systems which this thing does not have because uh, i have recommended not to for uh easy maintenance uh uh i mean a physical like big heat sink would do and for cleaning it's pretty much easy just take it out blow it with some compressed air and you're done uh radiators are much more um harder to clean in my opinion because the uh, fins are actually for the uh, radiators they are they're packed much more closely and uh, it's very hard to get the uh, uh finer dust out if you're using compressed air so there's much more work to get dust out from the radiators as compared to uh heat sinks and fin stacks like this so we're probably done with this. We can do a quick test right now just to make sure all setup here is done and it's good before we put it into the case itself. So uh, this is the next step. I have to put this uh, sideways because uh, we're not going to care about this that much for now. Uh, we're done with the um, CPU uh, thermal paste applications. So I'm going to keep the uh, thermal paste. You know, if you guys have any questions, you guys can just, you know, put it in the chat. And I will try my best to answer them. By the way, this is the SSD, uh, which I will not be putting it in right now, because I just want to test, like, if everything here is working without uh, having the SSD inside. I'm just going to put this one side. So the next thing we need to open is the power supply. Hmm. Where's my pen knife? 
Slow mm. power supply because we have to power up everything with with power. So um let's open this up. This is a 750 watts power supply. The reason why I chose this is so that the uh you know the one using this right uh have some expandability options down the road if they were to uh like change your graphics card or you know because this uh, power supply goes on for like uh, 10 years of warranty so you can actually take it out of a system and put it into another system it's all good yeah boop, 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 boop. yeah my boy see 10 years all right so warranty is uh registered uh later once i'm done with all of this so this is the uh, C Sonic uh, Focus GX 750, so 750 watts of power, uh, running at uh, this is a 80 plus gold. Yeah, so it will run above like, um, let's see, I think it's 90 ish percent or 89 percent ish uh, efficiency. Yeah. Okay, so let's bust this out. Uh, oh, 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 I'm a dum-dum. It opens up like this. Yeah, yeah, my boy. Alright, so manuals, manuals, and more manuals, and zip ties. Is this zip ties? Uh, this is zip ties. Hey, they also have Velcro, which is very good for building. Alright, so Velcro, zip ties, screws. So that we can screw it to the back of the case and we have a power supply installation guide if you need any which i don't think anyone would uh i mean just put it in the case uh, i guess okay there are instructions in here to uh test your system if you have a tester uh yeah okay they will provide a tester which is one of the uh, pros of having a seasonic um power supply which i am pretty appreciative of right so there we go this is the manual itself some warranty cards and hey you have a chance to win a 50 dollars steam e-gift nice right but this is not for me this is for my client so uh i i don't embezzle stuff Right, so with that said, uh, we can unpack this whole thing. So power supply is uh, in this uh, foamy little uh, contraption here. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to take out the power supply first because this is slippery because it's in a uh, plastic uh, covering. So the next best thing is to take out the other stuff. So this is the uh, power supply tester that was uh, provided together with everything else and how they say um to test this uh if we want to test the power supply so just plug it in make sure it uh you know it can start up and that should be good to go just to test whether the power supply is working or not this is a uh, well attention to detail i guess for uh, users to test their power supplies pretty good so let's take out the cables so power cable to your uh, three pin uh, socket on your wall outlet or maybe a power strip. I won't be using this because I have my own. Um, and the backs and backs of modular cables. Right. I won't go through all of uh, what this uh, power supply has. But it has a pretty good selection of like long cables or short cables. Uh, like let's say for example the uh, SATA cables. Uh, there's different configurations. Uh, which I think would be uh, pretty interesting for like a builder because sometimes uh, if you change your case uh, you will have different circumstances where you use uh, different types of lengths of uh, cables and this actually provides you the options to do so yeah it doesn't come with a uh, storage bag like Corsair does but uh, I mean how often are you gonna take this out am I right so that's all fine by me uh, I just like the uh, selection that I'm being given here so that's that all right so this is where the uh power supply really comes out uh, 
so messy. Uh, oof. All right, okay. So power supply itself pretty small actually. Yes, it's, it's actually pretty small. Uh, uh, okay. So with C Sonic, uh, they actually provide a little button at the back. Yeah, if you guys don't know uh, modern uh, power supplies, if they are not running uh, that hot their fans will not be operated this is just so that uh, they can reduce the amount of uh, air going through the components and uh, you know tapping dust and stuff inside your power supply which is quite a crucial part of your computer so if you have any dust bunnies within uh, it can cause a spark and well cause a fire so it will be a fire hazard and your computer will be shut down so there goes your almost like probably a hundred plus investment on a power supply so okay so c sonic actually provides an option whether you want this to be a uh, fan always on or it ons after a certain temperature threshold so you can actually change it uh, with this button yeah so if it's on it will be on all the time but if it's off they call it hybrid mode so if it's off uh, it will only on when it's too hot in a sense yeah so that's one good touch here for the 750 watt power supply you have a few options uh, you, have, you can see the motherboard one will always be uh, standard obviously uh, for cpu you have only one the board has two but it's more for overclocking if you need two and you need the uh, power stability uh, you have options for more uh, for the cpu and pcie you have one two three four actually so i kind of misspoke just now um but most likely for this rig yeah i can put two just for the stability sake and for like peripherals like your ide your uh sata or molex if you want to come uh, like connect any like rgb devices via molex or sata power uh there's one two three four yeah so four power lines to to go out and connect yeah but for this rig i'm um, probably not gonna have any of this so most likely you will all be on this section and the top yeah so i'm gonna cable this up actually let's put this on one side and let's keep everything else i'm gonna put the power cable back in it's a little bit nice touch here where they actually uh tap this out so that they can slot this in and most likely uh, this is also for like you know compatibility with other countries because not all countries uses the uh, uk tripping plus so it's easy to change it up let's pull the documentation back in velcro is nice though i'm gonna put this one side uh let me have a look at the cables these are the sata and molex which i will not need which means I can chuck them back in. See, there's a lot of planning when uh, going to, you know, build a computer. You need to know what you need, you need to know what you don't need, and you need to manage everything. Uh, these are all the uh, motherboard cables, uh, CPU cable. Uh, PCIe cable, so I might need well, I might need all of them so, I will leave this out uh, power supply tester, I'm just gonna put it back in I don't really need it uh, the velcro I will only need uh, when I am installing it into the case itself so, I'll just leave this on the side make it now alright, so box on the floor uh, this is our fourth box, by the way. Nobody else needs to know. Alright, so what seems to be the problem? Ah. Uh, look at the power supply, we're gonna rig it in. We need it. The motherboard cable oh, I actually cut this on the wrong side doesn't matter All right 
So the uh, motherboard cable is the thickest of them all. So, you know, it's just a handful. And there's a lot of pins. So it goes to 24 if I'm not wrong. 24 pins. It goes under the motherboard itself. So we need this. We need... Usually this is the PCIe. It's also written on the plug itself. So you can see this. Yeah. And this goes to the power supply itself. So you so you won't be, you know, lost to which way to plug it in. So we need one for the power supply and the PCIe. What is this? Yeah, this goes to the CPU. Pretty written uh, clearly. So I need one of these. Actually, I need two of those if they still have. Yeah, they still have. To provide stability, let's go. I need two of these. I'm not sure whether the 3060 requires any more. Yeah, not really sure whether they need any more like power pins, but uh, I'll just keep this on the side for now. Oh. But for now, we need these. Comes with twist ties. Dancing, 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 dancing. Uh, second thoughts, I think I might need the graphics card now because the KSQ does not have integrated. Does it have integrated? Okay, I think it does have integrated, so it's fine. I'll just use the integrated graphics for now. Just to make sure everything is done. Right, so I have a cable over there just to plug this in. So I just put this over here. So for the motor, but this one will be going into the power supply itself. Comes in two strands. This one also comes in two strands, but it's more commonly uh, split at the end. So it's 20 plus 4. Yeah, so in total it's 24. Some bots which are smaller would only take 20. Yeah, but uh, there are bots. Um, most common bots will take 24. So we'll just keep this configuration. So for now, since we're testing, we don't really need to care about the organization that much. We just need to plug them in and uh, make sure everything works. But at the same time, you can also keep in keep in mind like, oh, okay, these are hefty cables, and uh, how am I supposed to wrap this around the board, or uh, around the case? So these two will go into the CPU. Make sure you put the PSU side into the PSU. Hmm. Since the board requires two, yeah, it doesn't matter. Since we're testing, let's go. Okay. Alright, so this is where I will take out the board and connect it. This is extra tissue paper. So on the board, uh, this is where you typically connect the uh, power. So this is where the uh, 24 pin, you can actually see it at the power one. Yeah, so this is the 24 pins that you will plug the long one in. And this is where the uh, CPU power will go. So on this board, it's a little bit special. That's two because this is an overclockable board, and uh, sometimes you need more power to, uh, you know, provide to the CPU for overclocking. That's why you have two. Yeah, but for stability sake, why not just have two? There's there's more than enough space here just to provide two. So it's fine. I'll just plug in both.
And this goes like this. Okay, so make sure when you push it down, make sure the clips are clipped so it doesn't fall out. And to make sure that it's like, you know, all made in contact with the uh, pins on the board. You don't want your uh, desktop to cut off uh, mid midway just because you banged it or something. All right. So two of these, same issues, clips, make sure they're clipped on. And the orientation of uh, this uh, is actually quite important. But uh, usually you can just tell it from where the uh, the other side of the clip lies. So just uh, orientate them correctly and then just push it in. Nothing too hard. Okay, so now we have everything plugged in. I just need to have some video out so that I can actually see some stuff. Uh, 24 pin is a little bit short for this configuration, but it's okay. I can just leave this on the side. Okay, good thing this comes with uh, HDMI because I'm using HDMI to go to the uh, monitor right here. <laughs> Alright, so HDMI. And the power. Alright. So power goes to the back. Do take note that there's another power switch down here where the uh, power supply is. Yeah, so you can choose the off or on. Yeah, doesn't really matter. I don't have my mains on, so I'll on it later and then I'll on it here again. Alright, so everything is set up. I will need a... Do I need a keyboard? Uh, what the hell not? And right. Alright, so this is one of the essential tools for PC building and it's called a buzzer. So if you guys can see. So there's something called post code. So if you have issues trying to post or trying to boot up the, the whole desktop, it will have different kinds of beats. So this is important for like debugging if there's any issues with this setup and uh i'll just plug this in some of the motherboards don't come with it some of them come with uh you know pins to allow you to put in the buzzer some of them come with uh integrated buzzers and some of them totally come with nothing which is very frustrating All right. So on the board, there's also indications on how am I supposed to plug this in. So don't really need the manual for that. And to boot up the computer, since I don't have any like power button uh, connected to the board, I'll just use a screwdriver. All you need to do is just to make uh, contact with the pins uh, for the power on switch. Yeah. So what you do is uh, prepare a flat head. All right. So you have those two pins. You stick the flat head in the middle and just twist, just to make contact with both sides, basically. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if uh, I get any display. Then I cut out some audio on. Yeah. Then I cut out some audio on my monitor. But that's not the issue. Let's try this. What's on the mains?
Okay, mains are on. And this is on. Let's try booting this up. Wait, is that even correct? What the? It's not on. Wait, is what? Oh, I did something stupid on Kidera. Is this even connected? Oh wow, I I on the wrong switch. Nice, nice. Alright, let's try this again. Oh. Ah, we got fire. Right, so we have this thing booting already. You can see the pretty lights in which I do not want to move this around, so I might have to move the camera. Uh, mouthful, mouthful. Move it, move it. Look at it. Yes, there's RGB lights. Look at that. You guys like that, right? A little bit weird, but okay. Let's move this back. There's no beeps. Uh, I want to see if there's some stuff on the uh, monitor. Actually, let's have a look. Yeah, where's the, where's the, where's the... Wait, is this two or... Oh, damn it, this is one, not two. Ah, I did a dum dum. Yes. Number one. Okay. You should boot me to the BIOS. Where is the BIOS? Wait, there's no signal. I want to reboot. <laughs> right, let's reboot this. Wait, what? okay okay i see something okay i'm at the bios uh, if you guys can't see because i can't see what you guys can see because i'm using the same monitor right here so uh let's uh look at my crazy setup here uh, 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 yes by Bi bios yay okay we, we are good yeah let's go okay time to put you guys back this is not a professional setup and uh, you guys shouldn't be expecting that much. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do my best here, alright? Yeah. Okay, uh, I need to set some stuff like the XMP. So, um, I just need to set that for now. Let's go memory. I know you guys can't see the screen and uh, uh, it's different for each BIOS, but I uh, might as well just show it to you. Not sure if you guys can see this. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on the floor. So uh, it's kind of disorganized. Uh, let me see if uh, you guys can see this. I hope you guys can see this. Yeah. So what I'm doing in here in the BIOS is just to set the XMP. Uh, profile because uh, as advertised on the uh, RAM itself uh, it says that, that it's going to run at 3200 uh, megahertz but now it's only running at 2666 which uh, it's not wrong it's just that the uh, memory overclocking is not enabled via the profile so what I want to do is XMP profile because I don't have a mouse connected uh, can I switch this does enter not do anything Do I really have to? Hey, advance, yes. Just, what? Yes. No. It does not make sense to me. Creator Genie. 
uh, we're not creating room. Are you not gonna allow me to press that one? What the heck is going on? Okay, XMP profile one. Weird. Uh, let's have a look. This is all the CPU stuff. DRM timing, memory fast boot, digi power, CPU timing. So I'm not gonna touch all that for now. The uh, nope. M flash. What about settings? System advanced. Nope. Boot save and exit. OC profile. Nope. Hardware. Yeah, this is where you actually said like, oh, you want this to, uh, affect the speed of your fans according to what uh, temperature from where, all that stuff, all that good stuff. But as you can see, the um, CPU temperature is running at a very cool uh, thirty five uh, degrees Celsius with the help of the heatsink. So I mean, it's also sitting at uh, idle. So nothing much to comment on that. I think I should just. Save and exit. Let's see what happens. The save changes and reboot. It will come back here. Ah, yes. Okay. Now let's see if uh, we have a change in the speed itself for the memory. Hey, there we go. Alright, so if you guys can see um on the top, uh, that's my that's my mic stand. So if you guys can see on the top, space data is thirty two hundred megahertz right now. So our memory uh profile has been set. Uh, I mean the XMP for the memory has been set. So we are done, and we know that whatever setup we have done here works. So we can safely put this into the case now. Okay, we don't want to debug uh, any issues that are on the board when we put it into the case because that's a little bit stupid. Right? We want to debug everything we can as much as we can. We put as much stuff as we can on the motherboard before we put it into the case. Okay, so uh, I need to move you guys back. I need to turn this thing off and uh, we need to head back to the show. Alright, let's turn this thing off and uh, put you guys back. Yeah. This is so not a professional setup. Oh, you guys are higher now. Hello. You guys are wondering what I'm doing. I'm trying to switch the uh, input on my monitor right here. And it takes a while because it's manual. So let's see. Do you pop up? Yep, you pop up. Display port. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I need to see what you guys are seeing because uh, I'm also kind of confused. And uh, I need to place you guys back into uh, a correct like angle or some. Uh, uh. Right back to the table, boys. I think uh, this is where it gets interesting because uh, when the uh, case pops up, it's the more interesting stuff that you guys will see. Alright, so let's uh, off the power supply. Let's off the mains. Plug this thing out. Plug everything out. And let's get the case. Actually, let's install the SSD first. I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to touch anything that is case uh, related if uh, I have some components still not on the board yet. Hydration first. Ah, damn. Eh, getting some uh, Discord messages. Let me have a look. A ah, damn. All right. 
Uh, let's button this out. Okay, remove the two cables. We can actually leave the cables connected to the uh, power supply because well, we're gonna slot it in and we're gonna plug it back at least for one side. So we need to remove it from the uh, motherboard itself. Yeah, it's like dealing with snakes. Oh, spin this around, get the keyboard out. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Sometimes uh, plucking out the 24 pin is a little bit hard because it's, well, it's 24 pins, you know. Ah, uh, United we stand, am I right? Ah, oh, okay, that's a hassle. So 24 pins, and one 8 pin, and two 8 pin. Right, so with this, the power supply can just uh, put it somewhere else for now. Just put it on the floor. Hot. Is it in here somewhere? Okay. We're gonna install the SSD right now. So what I have here is a uh, Samsung SSD 980. Not super fast, but it's actually quite fast at uh. Well, it's up to uh, 3500 megabytes per second so let me see if there's any stickers i need to cut through i don't want to cut through this one so i will cut through this one oh man i didn't see stuff <laughs> <laughs> nice Right, let me have a look at the broadcast. Hey, what's up? Why DDR4 and not DD5? Well, DDR5 is more um, expensive right now. And it's not really worth. Uh, and also, I'm not out here to break somebody's uh, bank. So this is a client build and it's, this is not for me. Okay. So for normal people like uh who just wants a desktop in this age, I will try to uh, uh have the specs for them to uh try to make this last as long as possible with minimal upgrades. Yeah. And also not break their current bank, you know. And also they're not looking for like a powerhouse setup. So there's no point in going to a DDR5 right now because we're not chasing the age right now. Yeah, we're trying to make something that is worth and affordable. Yeah, so that's one of my philosophies while uh, making a build for somebody. Yeah, because I don't want to break their bank. And yes, it's a Kopitiam setup. It's like the triple S setup, you know, it's like the, you know, singlet shorts and slippers. But I'm I'm in my house, so there's, there's no slippers. So I guess I'm stuck with two S then. Ah, yes, I have to restart my voice meter and have the music playing. Yeah, my boy. What can I do? Alright. SSD-wise, installation is pretty simple. Let me remove the screws on the motherboard itself. Oh, that was dangerous. Uh, damn it! Well, I thought the screw would stay in place. Now I have to find the screw on the floor. Uh. Mm. Mm. 
Who's so goofy down here? I can't find a screw. Well, at least not for now. Um, but I don't really need the screw to install. It's only for the heat sink. I can find it later down in this mess right here. Yeah. So uh, this little heat sink over here comes with a thermal pad. So it goes on uh, the SSD that is gonna be applied below. So I'm not gonna tear this out. Uh, after only after I installed the uh, SSD. Yeah. Damn, I really want to find that screw. Uh, uh. I found it. Right, found it. Usually these screws should come with a retention uh, ring around it just so that it doesn't fall off, at least on one side. But, uh, well, expectations were slashed. So that's why it fell out. So, put this on one side. Hmm... Right, so for the length, there's already a little standoff installed for me so that I don't have to do anything on that. Let's take out the SSD. SSD is uh, if for people who have yet to see this before, it's actually quite small. It can fit in the size of my hand. Or like, it's as long as my finger. Yeah, so it's actually quite small, quite thin. Yeah, so this is the new age of SSD, I suppose. Right. So let's slot this in. Always slot this in at an angle and then press it down. Okay, so you can see that it's uh, actually angled up once you put this in. Yeah, so it flips up. Uh, not sure whether you guys can see. This is heavy AF, man. Right, so over here. Yeah, so this is its normal position. You just gonna press it down and screw it in. There's like a standoff at the bottom already, so I'm just gonna screw it in. Just use one of the screws that are being provided, which I have yet to figure out which one is it. This is the one with the standoff. This is the one. Oh, this looks like another standoff. Do I not have just a screw? Da, 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 da. Let's keep the SSD box first because it's cluttering out my place. Right. Another box done. Power supply. <laughs> Of course, the screw is there already. Yeah. Oh, this this prompts me to take out the SSD first. Jesus. Let me have a look at this because I'm working without a manual right here. Uh. Uh, I see. Okay, it's the same as the rest. I just need to release the one on the top. What am I looking at? What the heck?
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to remove this. It's just that I might need another sharper screwdriver here. Now here is the curious part because I'm unable to remove this screw because it's very tight. So here comes the question. Am I supposed to remove it or not? That one goes to the back, this one goes down here, it's making an impact on the top. Yeah. What the hell does this mean? This is where manuals will come in handy. Let's have a look at the installation guide then. Jesus. Instructions unclear. Undo this. So if you guys missed out the uh, first few like tens of minutes, this uh, motherboard doesn't really come with a manual. It comes with an installation guide, but not a manual. Uh, and it's a quick installation guide. How quick is this? Uh, I have no idea. <sighs> oh my G. Oh, it comes with a lot of uh, installation guide. Yes, yes, yes. But it doesn't come with like... Oh. It's, it's legit an installation guide. Okay. So, speeding forward. You have cables installation. Where is the most important SSD installation? I told me it's at the back. Don't tell me it's missing. Nice. Nice. It is missing. What the fuck? Yep, it is missing. Damn it. You guys need to hold on while I uh, consult the internet. Because the manual should be on the internet. <sighs> Not every build is smooth sailing. Phone. <sighs> I mean, I get it that they want to save on paper and printing because most of the people just don't read. But uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of lost. Uh, DDR4. Day, yeah. No, it's not obvious enough because each of the bots come with their own little quirks and stuff. It's supposed to be universal, but uh, you know, people just want to be special. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me to the uh, the the the, the, the what 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 they call support. Register drivers downloads BIOS. I'll update the BIOS later, but that's a later thing. Where's the manual? Hello? Hello? Fucking on my mind. Ah, yes, manual and document. Yeah. Nice. So, if you guys can see, right, the manual is like freaking 8 max. Uh, download then. Yes. But I'll be pissed if they give me the quick installation guide again. Oh, let's have a look. Tell me the stuff. Oh yeah, it is the manual. That I don't have. Nice. Yes, tell me everything. Tell me everything. Welcome to the inner workings of my mind.
Ah, you're not supposed to take out the damn black plastic. Alright, so if you guys don't know, uh, I need to show it to you. Okay, so you see this little contraption right here? Uh, actually, which orientation is this even in? Ah, uh, uh, yes. So, I'm not sure whether you guys can see. Uh, focus is not doing very good. So, it's this little screw thing here that you're supposed to attach to the board. And the black part, the black part that spins around, is supposed to secure the SSD. So, I'll show you what they uh, actually have on the manual itself. Uh, right. So, with some diagrams, you can actually see what the heck is going on. So, you're supposed to screw it in. You're not supposed to remove the screw on that screw. You're supposed to use the black part to secure the SSD. <laughs> Mind blown. Alright, so with that understanding and a freaking working manual that I have to go download myself. I wonder what people, you know, with no knowledge of this will do in this situation. They might even panic, man. Okay, so the thing is, I will screw this back in. I will use the black thingy to uh, secure the um, SSD. So let's put this back on. All right. So like anything else, like I said, PC building isn't complicated. It's just tedious. Okay. So with the instructions, like like you know, after I read the instructions, it'll be easy for you to understand what is going on and how to proceed. So without the instructions, you'll be super lost. And this is why manuals are important. Uh. Okay, so with that done, SSD is going to go back in. Okay, so it's supposed to lie under the black piece of plastic. So with that, then you spin it in and it will be locked. So this thing doesn't pop up anymore because it's locked below. Okay, so with that confusion out of the way, we need to remove the uh, film on the uh, thermal pad right here and place it back down. Okay. Don't you guys just love, you know, like tearing away the uh, plastic film on new stuff? It's like retail therapy. Under the hood. Okay, so same thing with screwing. Uh, don't screw it down with too much force. Because there's a certain limit where you should screw it down. Just make sure it's tight because this thing is not going to fly off anyways. Just make sure it's tight, it's not loose. The screw doesn't come off uh, easily. And we're good to go. So that's installed already. Very good. So we're done with all this setup. We just need to test whether the uh, graphics card would work or not, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to be an issue. So we can put it, uh, put everything into the case itself right now. This is the PCIe cable, which I can put it off to one side for now. I am expecting a little bit of problem because the case is going to be quite big if I'm going to put it on the table. I might have to take it out and then load it onto the table. Maybe in the background or something, you know, in the, in the background.
And nice. So what I like to do is just to cut off the uh, you know the tip securing the top, and then flip it 180 degrees, and then just pull out the box. Then the case will be on the floor with the styrofoam and everything. Oh, hey. My man, how was it? Okay, so this is a small manual, and also, thank you for your purchase. All right, so uh, pretty nice note. Um, not sure whether I get any benefits from this. Thank you, but uh, eh, eh, eh. okay, looks good. The rest, uh, it comes with like a box full of like contents and stuff. Okay. So, <laughs> below cardboard, with a box full of uh, some additional stuff. We can explore this later. Like, whoopa. Okay, I'll just put this aside because it's just cardboard. Uh, I need a vacuum on the floor from all this styrofoam. Alright, so one thing I noticed is that this thing doesn't really have that much of a gripping space. Maybe at the back, there's a hole. Other than that, uh, it's all very grabby grabby. I can take this out, so. But I think to note that, uh, in these cases, they're almost always statically charged. So once it touch this, it actually charged, and you have to discharge it somewhere else. Uh, my running desktop over there, I can discharge it over there because it's always connected to the ground via the power supply. And I don't want to touch the uh, whole setup yet because I might discharge it and spoil some stuff. Oh, thick boy. All right, now I have everything out. Oh, this boy is actually quite big, if you guys can see. Ugh. As it comes with a tempered glass on the side, which contributes to some of its weight. Let me discharge myself first before I do anything. This is insane. Feels good. Let me take this out. 
Alright, so a little bit of warning on the tempered glass at the bottom. Pretty good. It peel off the protective film on both sides. I will leave that to the user. As I can give them the satisfaction of peeling off wrappers on new stuff. Nothing too hard. Let's check out uh, what's inside this box. Which I am... Okay, so if I'm not wrong, this is the... One of the expandability options for the back because uh, this case can be fitted for an ATX board, an MATX board, and a ITX board, but you have to move the back around uh, a little bit if you want to have different positions for that. And lots of screws for your expansion. Okay. There's way too many screws, but okay. Uh, we will need some for the motherboard, so we will leave on the side. Next up is to figure out how to actually open up on the side. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's a, actually a lot of screws at the back because uh, the whole back plate can be removed. So I turn this around and you guys have a look. Oh. Uh, you guys can see, right? Yeah. So each panel down here can be removed so you can actually change like or if you want to bring the whole thing down you can so uh, i'm not gonna go through like uh, what what else you can do with this it's uh, pretty much a uh, removable stuff and you can slot things anyhow yeah but i'm just gonna keep the uh, standard layout because we're going for an atx build so this is not gonna be changed that much so i don't really care about this i just need to know how to open up the sides I know how to open up the top is basically this, but it's tied that up quite tight, so I have to remove this using a screwdriver. Just screw this. Yeah, okay, the screws retain itself so it doesn't fall out. So you don't really have to care about like uh where you lose your screws like you know how i did it just now and the top is oh okay i'm not sure whether this is steel or aluminum uh this feels more like steel because this has some hefty weight to it so okay that's something to take note of i'm gonna put this on the side okay so how to remove the sides mm. actually how to remove the sides is like a mystery to me well i know how to remove this side so let's cut off uh, as much weight as possible because i need to bring this up and down left and right in and out I might as well Feels like steel, so you also see uh, meshes on the uh, backside area. Retaining screws, okay. Feels like steel. Oh. Yeah, the bow, man. There we go. Oh my, no, no way, no way, man. How do you take out the glasses that you have to pull it, push it up, and take it out? Okay, so it locks in place uh, with gravity, I guess. Uh, there's some uh, hooks here. Uh, not sure whether you guys can see it. I'll just spin it around once I place this thing down. Uh, I don't feel that good. <laughs> That's one heavy piece of glass. Yep. 
So the only thing that uh, is retaining that uh, piece of glass is this hole here. You can see with the lights and another hole over here. So it's basically a hook that that the glass is hooking on so that it retains at the front. Uh, but I'm pretty sure with the top it should retain in place unless if there's some defect where the glass slips out and well you have to cling wrap the front now all right so taking a look at the internals looks pretty good mother box goes here the power supply will be behind yeah there'll be some uh drop out holes over here for the cables to come out uh cuts off at a 90 degree angle yeah so it's there's two of them uh, my client doesn't really have a hard disk, so I don't really have to care about that. But if you guys want to know, it's uh, there we go. Right, so you can mount the hard disk over here. There should be some retaining screws where you can screw onto it. Yeah, make sure you can see it. Yeah, so power supply goes here. This is, if I'm not wrong, another hard disk drive cage, which is not really needed, I think. Uh huh. The interesting thing is that I don't really know whether I can remove this because if it's not needed, I can just remove this, save some weight, uh, put it on the side. If it's needed, uh, they can just, you know, reinstall it back. And for this, uh, have this uh, tray. Uh, it's more of a cover if you don't really use this part. But I suppose if you take it out, you can install some fans on this side also. There should be some holes over here which will allow you to install some fans on the side. So you have some fans here at the front also the top if you want but too much airflow is not always a good airflow just gonna put that out there and front panel can be easily removed feels like steel also so everything is steel and uh yeah nothing much to say mesh holes eh. right so easily removable and easily uh cleanable is that what okay so we have removed uh, almost uh every panel on this thing except for the uh, bottom one which is an air filter which i don't really care for for now because it's not that intrusive let me see if i can take it out ah, there we go right so this is the only mesh that is not made of metal or well it looks like a fine metal mesh like those super thin ones yeah but I don't think you really need to care about this because there's not going to be airflow coming from the bottom unless if you have some fans from the bottom. But uh, for this kind of setup, I don't think uh, that's necessary because air goes from the front to the back. Pretty simple. You don't really need to care about this. Um, but I will put this on one side. So, so, so. <laughs> Let me see if I can remove this and the whole section should pop out. Can I? Oh man, don't tell me I have to remove that screw. Okay, I have to remove that screw. Alright. So if you guys don't know, uh, the Bauer is also another uh, tech YouTuber. Uh, he also does like overclocking and stuff. So that's, uh, he, he does some like analysis on the uh, whole system and overclocking stuff. Uh, okay, so this is more of a cable retention system where you take it out, do a cabling stuff, you put it back in just so that it doesn't press on the uh, uh, side cover. So, but it doesn't come with a retention screw, probably because it doesn't fit the profile. So you have to live with this. I will put this on one side for now. What? Alright, I just noticed uh, when walking around, I found one of the uh, fan screws loose and it's on the floor. So I'm not sure where it came from, so I have to find it. It might 
come from one of the fans in here so not really sure okay oh wow okay so after removing all the uh like panels and stuff this is actually quite manageable it's quite light where are these screws nope not here not at the back so i guess it's a loose screw then what the hell what they just leave a screw lying around okay uh uh, I, I get a free screw then. Hmm. Okay, let's start. I might have to take out the uh, fans just to reorient uh, them so that the cables are going where I want them to go. Because, um, like, yeah. <sighs> like, if you can see, the uh, cable goes from the top. But from just now, we saw that the uh the fan header for the fan at the back is at the middle ish so i might have to spin this around but first i need to take it out so let's go you know it's quite a hassle to make like live stream building video especially for this part because i like to um you know put in everything on a horizontal position and not a vertical one so most of the time you guys won't even see the action that's just the reality of it. Yes, I'm pretty sure one of the screws is loose, but that is extra. What the heck? Uh, ah, there we go. Oh, this this fan is actually quite heavy. Probably will have some uh, strong um, motors inside. Interesting. Uh, if you guys don't know, this uh, case actually came with a uh, one 120 uh, fan at the back and two uh, 140 fans at the front. So if you guys are considering on getting this uh, case, this is the uh, uh, 011 Air Mini from Lian Li. So uh, you guys don't have to buy extra fans if you don't want to. Just have a simple setup, front intake, back exhaust. Easy. Yeah. Oh, which means I don't have to need this anymore. I'll put this back when it's time. Need to open up these later. All right, we can put in the board now. No issues. Well, I want to put in the board first instead of the power supply first because it's power supply is too unwieldy for me. I can put it back uh anytime later. Fine. Nice. Is it did no? Uh, before I forget, need to put the uh IO shield at the back first. All right. Uh, keep this for the client. Right, the orientation is going to be like this. So let's slap it back in. Ah. Okay, looks like it's in. Make sure the standoffs are correct. Uh, I have nine of them for full ATX board. Uh, where's my torchlight? It's a little bit far. 
Mm. I'm gonna trust whatever it has, it has. If you are building for any other boards, right, or any other size boards, right, you guys might have to check the manual for which uh, standoffs is uh, actually being used for that type of board. Yeah. I'm just going with it because uh, this thing is uh, originally catered for like ATX boards. So I'm just gonna try and fit. Should fit. Because the standoffs are already in default position for ATX. And this is the part where I need the torch light. Was bad lighting. Okay, that one seems to be in. Yeah. Sit, sit. Okay, so for, for now, I'm just going through all the holes to make sure that they're aligned with the uh, standoffs. And the good news is, they are. So, let's screw in. That's my bag of screws. Okay, there's many types of screws in here. But only a few fits the uh, motherboard, so... I uh, can't really teach you how to find it out, but... Let me have a look at it first. It's not the ones with like extensions, nope. This one. And standoffs, yeah. It's the one that comes with standoffs. And it's not the one that is hexagonal. Lots of screws, man, lots of screws. Mm. Not the thick one. Be the one with the washers because it's the one that is the most in here. Yeah, so there are different types of screws in here. Um, you can test it out. Okay, so whatever they gave in here, right? Uh, there are like some standoffs, some screws. So standoffs are basically the hexagonal ones that you can screw something on top of them. Yeah, so you can use those to gauge uh, which screw is actually being used. Uh, usually it's the thinner threaded one, so the threads are actually seated closer to each other so let me just open up let me take out one stand off and also one screw which I am suspecting that it is the correct one so this is one of the stand offs yeah, and this is one of the screws. Yes, it's very small. I don't have a macro camera. This is a webcam. Uh, so what you want to do is just to screw it in and see whether it fits. It's supposed to slide in smoothly, so you can screw it in with your finger. Okay, so these threads are very important because uh, some of them are uh, further apart. And they won't, they will have some friction when going into the standoffs itself. The standoffs are for you to... Uh, place on many different positions on the on the case itself so that you can fit different types of boards yeah so if this is uh going in smoothly well this is the screw for it uh. that's usually how i will uh determine and it comes with experience if you really want to uh if you really want to get into this there's not much of variations on screws because they are supposed to be standardized across cases so i need to take out nine because there's nine of them almost dropped there all right just make sure the screws that i'm picking out are of the same type it was a mistake making a small hole but i will live with my mistakes And also it's easier to keep stuff actually. I don't want them to suddenly flow out, so come on, come on. Wait, how many do I have now? I have five. 
Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Okay. So I don't really need the rest of the screws. Yes, because the rest are already on whatever it is. Yeah, I need to not have it. So, okay. Keep this. Right. So this is done. I just need to screw everything in. Phillips head. Slowly do it one by one, but do it nine times. So, uh... For you guys who are watching, uh, how's your typical Thursday? Be at hole. Stand off. Same old, same old. It's hot, right? Are you guys working from home or are you guys like, you know, going back to offices? Is this like a new standard to work from home? It's the new, new, new normal. Holding, yeah. Well, I guess everyone is moving back to their office also. Mm. But it's okay. There's a uh, there's there's aircon, so it's good. It's not like my setup here. What do you think I'm in this uh singlet setup? Am I right? I don't have an office, man. Home for wow. With or without aircon, yeah, that's that's the important question. Aren't I always in singlet? It really depends. If it's winter time, I'll be in a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, without aircon. Oh, soldier on, bro. Oh yeah. I don't step the board. You can be a new beginning. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh -uh. Right, nice screws finally in. Taking a little bit of time, but it's okay. Right now, to tighten each and every one of them individually and slowly. You know, sometimes I wonder, right, when building PCs, maybe I should go uh, weightlifting or something, or go to the gym. Because these things are damn heavy, man. And also, by the way, right, this build doesn't have any uh, hard disk drives. So it'll be lighter, but it's still heavy. Mm. 
Yeah, my boy. Okay, done. Ah. Uh, I'm not gonna lift this mahjong table I and mean, and my my own setup has a lot of hard disk, and it's not very wieldy. God damn. Maybe I should do the same thing as uh, last time, right? So once this build is done, uh, I'll, I'll weigh this on a like a weighing scale, and uh, it will be on my Instagram to uh, show uh, how heavy this thing is with everything installed, and you know, and this doesn't come with hard disk drive. Uh, this. This can be open to reveal the cage, but I can remove the cage using these two screws, am I right? Please, please tell me it's right. Uh, please, 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 please. If that's the case, then I should remove this. Oh, look, look, this is removable. Yay. All right, so I love cases like this because it's like highly customizable. And I also love like cube cases because, uh, is is more wieldy uh, as compared to like a tower case, so a tower case is like taller but slimmer. So you know if you try to take it from the bottom, right, your CG is actually quite high. But this one is uh is shorter but it's thicker, so the CG is much more concentrated into the middle. Yeah. So if you want to lift a desktop, right, get a cube case. I don't know why I'm giving giving like fitness advice. This is not fitness advice. Whoa, disclaimer. Okay. So if you guys can see, I'm removing the uh, back two screws for this uh, hard disk cage at the back here. Oh, there's more screws. Okay. There's four screws up here. So I am guessing once I remove these four screws, the the cage is gonna yep yep is is loose already. So I can take oh this is actually quite heavy. Interesting. Okay. So um this cage is for ah triple five uh inch hard disk drives. There's two base for it. And, 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 and you can clear this is like this is this is steel so obviously this is gonna be heavy so i'm gonna leave this out put it in the box uh if the client wants to install this in uh i can show them how to install it maybe in a further video but yeah i'll think about it i'll think about it but four screws uh kind of dropped the last one again not sure where it dropped to Oh, is that? So, four screws, eh? I will need to pack this up. Somehow. Sometimes I feel like building a computer is just like going to the gym. Just that this gym doesn't have aircon. Okay, so now the case is lighter and more wieldy. Okay, this is secured. Power supply goes in here. This is a little hole over here. Graphics card is gonna take one of these slots or actually two of these slots. Uh, the rest of it goes down to cable management, which I want to do later. But since now the motherboard and everything is inside, uh, I would like to keep the box, keep my table clean. So what I like to do, uh, uh, for clients is to consolidate all the uh, paperwork, admin stuff, all inside the uh, motherbox, uh, motherboard case. So um. Uh, so that they actually have everything centralized and if they want to search for anything uh it'll be easier la. so as a disclaimer i don't keep anything extra that the client doesn't use i just give them everything so 
they will have everything if they need to upgrade or whatnot if they wanted to uh, this is i will shield i don't really need this too this is for the case if i want to move things around this one so i'll just put it on one side Mm, fans, twist ties, uh, we can do it later. Uh, wi Fi antenna, um, I will install it later. Probably will not fit in the box of the case, but uh, I'll think of something. Maybe I'll just chuck it in and uh, instruct the user how to install it. Yep. extra screw in the box yeah, yeah yeah i will also put the extra screw in the box once i consolidated everything so yeah because there's extra screws that come with like uh the like hard disk case uh the the back cable management also uh extra fan screw the extra one fan screw that i have no idea came from where uh yeah i'll consolidate later with the other case stuff so that would be after so that's another box done guys Whoa, another box so we are done with one two three four five six six boxes nice we are going through boxes like crazy Life is all about having boxes and boxes within boxes. It's recursion. Right. Eh, actually, I do want to uh, open this up and see what's up. I mean, since I'm here, am I right? Eh, pick a bow. Mm. So, this is a uh, hard disk cage cover thingy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can mount like uh different hard disk over here. This would be more for uh three point five inch, and maybe the middle ones are more for two point five inch. Yeah, and then you can just slap it on here. And as you can see, there's also like holes over here, which I think, I think, are for fans. Not really sure like what's the offset over here because there's only one one set here. Oh no 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 no! I'm wrong the the long holes over here are for fans yeah you can see like there's a slot over here pretty sure this can fit like a 120 oh good thing i have this handy yeah this fits a 120 so the holes align with the uh, slots so you can actually like move them up and down uh depending on uh whether you want it like lower or higher or whatnot yeah so if you wanna like make a like a super bright RGB uh whatever uh, yeah you can go ahead I guess. I don't really like the idea, but uh hey, where's your oyster? I'm just living in it. Right. So these two are actually removable, which I am not gonna remove because that will cause a lot of dust at the back. If I remove this and it will give us uh, access to the front where the fans are, it doesn't make sense so uh I'm, I'm just gonna leave them covered so let's screw this back in hand screw this make sure that everything is hand tight so it doesn't cause an issue next time if people want to open this up okay all right nothing else i need to change mm. yeah just make sure everything is hand tight I know most people is not like not gonna open this up but it's a good thing that I, I, I can do it like hand tight for them if they ever need to just open it up okay it's all loose so uh, I don't have to change anything here I just uh, loosen them all so that it's hand tight what I want to do is to connect the fans from the front to the motherboard, uh, install the fan on the back, 
then I would want to install the power supply. Uh, maybe not in that same order, but I'll take a look at it first. Because there's also the uh, I.O. stuff. I'll walk you guys through this, don't worry. It's not that hard. Are you serious? You, you stuck, boy? Yeah, you stuck. Okay. What I like to do is to co uh, create complete chaos by loosening all the cables and uh, just, just, you know, let it fling around while I do the other stuff. Because uh, it's, it's more or less like chaos. The madness. And why is there like a SATA kit? What, what, what is this? Oh no, this is this is me being dumb. This is USB C. Alright. Uh okay, you can see that it's uh, neatly uh, bundled up here. This is the front IO one. You can see it here. It's bundled nicely. So I don't really have to care about like the management over here. All I need to care is like all the stuff that is here. That is gonna be connected to the board. So this is my responsibility. This I don't really care. Or I don't really need to care. But I can loosen it up and uh rearrange it myself but uh I'll, I'll take a look later i just need to figure out the two front fans would be going to the bottom if i'm not wrong or oh, one at the top one at the bottom uh, never mind i'll do the back fan first it's easier So, like I said just now, the uh, back fan will be connected to one of the fan headers over here, which is in the middle. So, I don't want the cable to like uh, go around the world just to go over here. So, I try to spin it around so that the cable is of the least length as possible. Maybe like this. Could work. Because it will have to... Um, Hmm. Yeah, I might have to extend this a little bit and then tighten it. But it can work. It can work. We'll make it work. Hmm. Going down like this wouldn't work that well. How about this? This would work better. Yeah, let's go with this one. It's a lot of planning. Not a lot of building. Guys, make sure you guys are hydrated because uh, I'm actually quite thirsty from all this talking. Mmm. Feels good. It's good. Let's go. Tap, 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 tap. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm no breaks. I'm invincible. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Okay, what I'd like to do is to uh, secure it with two screws and then see whether the cabling works or not. And First inspection, it doesn't work as well as I hoped it to be. Spin it around. This is a little bit longer. Nah, eh, too long. The other way? Wait, the other way would be like this. Uh, we can make this work. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, we can make this work if... Uh... Oh, I can just do it like this and it will hang loose at the bottom. Uh, I might need to tie this a different way. 
Hey, what up, Ray? Unstoppable, unmovable, with no brakes. I'm invincible. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Just want to say this stream is a little bit boring because I don't have like some BGM running in the background. Wait, what 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 ah uh, like this okay. yeah this is correct let's go oh wait 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 guys wait check this shitty out. am i right can i can i do this can I? Oh no, I oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, am I? Can I? Hello? Oh, oh. Oh no. No, I thought I can uh, remove the back plate, but uh, it's all connected together, so there's a lot of screws before I actually get the whole thing out. So no, I'm not gonna do that because I'm lazy, and this is tedious. No. Okay, the good thing is, is that the uh, fans actually come with uh, the rubber pads also, so no shake, no shake. Remember, no shake. Okay. Uh, let's screw this in. The good thing about the slots is that uh, you can just leave it like that after one screw. It'll just uh, be in place. But uh, don't tighten it that fast. You want to position it before you actually tighten it. But I have two screws in, so... Mm, this is still long. Might have to turn it. I will get me high enough. I can you used to be my Ah yes, 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 the correct one. Guys, from watching me like build this thing, uh, uh, what what's my rating up till now? <laughs> right, the back fan is in. I want to align it so that you know the exhaust goes through here. Because it can go higher, but there's no point, there's nothing up here. So uh, I want it to flow. So I'll just go to the lowest as I can. Oh, nice. Wow. Hey, thanks, boys. A 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right, so let's screw this in. We have the back uh, fans done. We don't really have to care about it anymore. Thanks for the spot, guys, for the 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Right, so in, in, in. Okay, back fans are done. Now to rewire the, ah, the front fence. I have to bring this down a little bit. Right, so taking a closer look at this. Uh, there are two system fan headers up here. Uh, there's also two system fans below here, which is kind of at the back. But I think it'll be easier for me to do it on the top. Yeah, thinking about it, yeah. So this is already going through the top, which is pretty good. 
this bottom one is also going through the top which is also very good i don't have to take this out uh, i just want to orientate everything to go up but uh let me see how am i supposed to route this without it being ugly hmm. it's all black carriage i can't hide this Yeah, I totally can't hide this because this is behind. Is there a fold on here? Yeah, that's the only bad news. This thing is going to look ugly. Because it's going to shoot right up. There any mm. but the good news is I think <gasps> the good news is there are four screws over here that you can remove the whole front panel here. Oh man, John gave me a five out of seven. Nice. It's because of the single L9. <laughs> There we go. So unscrew the front. Hey, Jesus. Okay. Well, fun fact is, I didn't know it was gonna break up into two parts, but now I know, and now you know. Okay. Uh, there's no good way to actually orientate this because there's. But it's a good thing that, you know, the, the mouse come off easily. You can just mount any uh, new fan on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it takes in uh, 120 also, as you can see the slots over here. Yeah, so the so the outer one is, is only a hole. It will fit like uh, 140mm fans. But the uh, smaller slots, uh, you can put like 120mm fans. And you can slot them like up or down. You can also like fit a radiator in here if you want. Which I'm not about to do, so so i'm gonna put that aside have a look at the internals see what's up before i put them back in because if you can see or if you can't yeah you should be able to see because uh, now this thing is removed so there's not much covering around here so you will see everything that is down here uh if you have cables running from like the fence at the front to the board right it will just be like a cable going like that or like that so you will always see it so that's the only ugly part i guess yeah there's nothing i can do well live and let live let me see, let me see, can I cheat the system a little bit? Um, okay, tell you guys what, I'm gonna cheat the system a little bit, it's gonna make it a little bit stupid in the long run, but short run, uh, it's gonna look great. What I'm gonna do is to cable one of the fans to go up to the other rack that is on top. And then it will go out the same hole that is on the top so that both cables will come out from the same hole on the side on the top so if you want to remove the fan on the bottom you have to go through the fan at the top so that's the only like issue but uh, you know you solve the ugly problem uh, it's all about fixing ugly problems damn it yep 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 but i mean it's, it's not that hard to remove it uh it's easy to remove i just need to push this out can you fit i hope this thing fits though hey 
okay this thing fits pretty good pretty good so uh, i'm designating this to be the lower fan it will sit like that so the top one will be seated like that uh, uh, yeah. so let me see there's a little bit of play on the side yeah so i can route the cable in here and out of here yeah so that i mean i mean it looks neat so oh what you gonna do man um let me loosen this thing up first so i get much more play on the cables so the original plan was to be like this this thing goes up and this thing will go through here which uh to finesse it a little bit yeah my boy there we go so oh no 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 do not do not bend the cable i have to flip you around why 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 are you stuck why are you running uh, yeah yeah there we go there we go there we go okay so this is like the expected run so you have the bow be like this cables come out from the top goes to the motherboard easy so you don't have like the cable coming from like halfway onto the board itself which looks ugly but at least the routing is uh clear um yeah yeah i just need to screw this back in together and i i feel like an ape doing this bleh okay where, where, where are my screws man Okay, so I will screw the one on the top first because uh, actually I'll just slot them in. I, I totally forgotten that you can slot them in without screwing them in. Oh no, you have to screw in the bottom one first. Of course, of course. Yes, why not? Yes. Okay, good. I'm gonna screw them in for real for now. Hey. Hey. Yeah, they're on tank now. Easy. Alright, so looking at the back, you guys will be able to see that cables are all coming out from the top. Easy access to the headers over on this side. So I just need to tidy it up and uh, I'm all good. I want to tidy them up so that the um, you know cables are uh, individually packed. So that uh, let's say for example if one of the fans spoil, uh, you don't have to untie everything. But you do have to remove everything in this setup. Uh, mistakes were made. I should have tied this before I put it in. But get what you get. Cool. Uh. 
Uh, get what you're given, man. Oh, this is gonna be a little bit difficult because this thing is tied up like that so that the the header is on that side instead of this side you guys can't see but it's like uh the um i have to give it some slack uh, let's see how am i supposed to do? extend both sides so it is longer and then bend it this way wait am i using the correct this time tiring bro uh, Guys, do you guys ever notice that you guys know where your hands are at all times? Even though when you close your eyes, but you still know where they are? Fun fact. Ah, ah, this is too long. Wait, why am I doing this? Just plug it in and then adjust. Yeah, get. Oh, uh, shite. easy okay so i got the front fence done back fence done well internal fence done graphics card is still not in front io is still not in no power uh, let me think power should come in first because the cables are thicker well, that's that's my thought process. Some people might see it differently. See, it's much more spacious without that cage up here, so I can play around with uh, however much I want. So power supply. No. Okay. So rule of thumb, power supplies, you have a fan, it's obviously not gonna face the inside. Fans are gonna always face the outside. So orientation wise, it's pretty much fixed. Some people might put the fan on the inside because they have a lack of experience and uh, they are unsure of which side to put in. So they just, oh, if it fits, it sits. No, 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 don't. There we go. That's it. So the power supply has four screws. Uh, we can actually use the screws from the casing itself and not use the power supply on. So you just need to know which one to use, which I know. And I hope 
They're heavy now. What the hell am I looking at? Oh, no, this hard, this one. Over there. No, stop. No, what? G Okay, what am I looking at? We got one, two, three. There's only there's so oh, I'm looking at it on the wrong way. There's only three of these screws, which means I cannot use these. So back to the power supply. What else this point? Boom. So if you are scared and unknown of uh, what screws to use, just use the power supply. Yeah. If you are lacking experience in this and don't know which uh, screws with which threads, just use the one in the uh, provided with the power supply. Yeah. They usually have like a small hex head. Uh, let me take out one and show you guys. Anymore, G. Alright, so it's pretty angular. Yeah, and the threads are fairly far apart as compared to the screws used in the uh, motherboard ones. Yeah, and the uh, hole for the uh, screwdriver is mostly is is larger in a sense. So let's use this four. Is it four? Yeah. It's always a package in four because power supplies you only need four screws. Because the security of the case. Hey, what the bro? Okay. The screw holes are pretty much a standard. Uh they're not aligned. Uh but you can just see uh The locations on the power supply. It, there's there's only like four screw holes, and usually on the case itself, uh, they will have like four holes for you to you know screw through so that it holds on to the uh, power supply. Same rules apply. Screw everything in first, not too tightly, and then tighten them after. There we go. So power supply, we are done. Uh, I keep it at off, so that you know, just just keep it at off. It's like a safety mechanism for myself. Do 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 do. Okay, so we know that the uh, CPU power is on the top, so it has to be routed to the top. While the uh, motherboard one is around the middle here, so it's not much of a concern. We have a lot of play here. It's a fairly long cable, so for this though, I'm just gonna leave it at the side. Do the thick one first. Okay, so the motherboard one is around the top, so it's angle clip is facing this way, so it has to be like like that, where the clip is facing me. So how do I, it's going to be like this on the other side, which means there's a lot of extra cables here at the back. Let me just pass it through, pass it through and bend. Okay, let's bend it first so that when it's on the other side, it will be inserted like that. Might have to rotate this. Nope. Yeah, much more natural. Yeah, much more natural. Oh, 
Pokemon C Jack. Okay, it's not completely in yet, but I want to manage the cable at the back first. So I know that it's going to be fitted like this. So it's comfortably uh, not in tension and it fits nicely behind here. So there's no issue for me uh, regarding this uh, cable management. So next I'm going to move out to the uh, CPU one. I just need to remember to uh, tighten that. Actually, I wanted to check out. Let me see how much. Uh, what is the power pins for the 3060 Ti? 3060 Ti Asus Tough. Mm, product pages can't see mm. oh there we go it is a singular eight pin nice which means if i want to orientate this both together i'll just put them all together at the bottom then i think is there any difference <laughs> hell no Yeah, but these guys are bent differently. What the heck? Okay. Uh, whew, okay. You do you, man. Uh, okay. Same thing. Check the orientations of the uh, clip. Uh, angle it down. The clip is facing upwards. So it's like towards you guys. If you guys are watching. So, I have to make sure that on the other side, it's been clipped. Turn here. Let it. So, the clips are facing upwards. Oh, okay. This is like gymnastics. Oh, uh, but doable. Doable, doable. Looking at the uh, case configuration, it's totally doable. Uh, whether or not I can do the... Gymnastics here is a different thing. Because I want the cable to go from above, below. I have to spin this a little bit differently. What, what am I doing? What in a simple way is to release this tool. Plug it in on the CPU side, I mean the motherboard side, and do whatever. Let me tighten the 24 pin first. Nope. Yeah, that's the clip. Good. So 24 pin is uh, secure. I don't have to care about this anymore. Now, so there's a hole at the top of the case where I need to fit these cables through. Okay, so one is being fed through. I need to secure this first. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, there goes one of the cables. 
Can you put this in? What the heck? Come on. Come on. Well, that's one of the problems dealing with uh, black builds is that you can't see anything. Uh. Okay, one is in. Yes, spin it around. Damn it. Nice. All right. So both is in. And I just need to pull this up. Then you can see two cables coming out from the top. This goes to the uh, motherboard that feeds the CPU power. All right. Okay, I'm bending the cables a little bit. So they can uh, bend better. Oh, hey! I can use that. Alright, so there's a hook at the top where I can just hook this on. And I'll bend it such that it is more natural for the cable. Because these are flat cables, not round. So they have a certain geometry to it. Hmm. Ah. Where is them velcro? Not this. See, this is where the uh, velcro comes in handy. Uh, there we go. This is damn awkward. Perhaps not. Uh, Jesus. It's like you guys are watching me plumb this thing. Uh, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing here, but uh, don't worry. Uh, I'm trying to route this. Uh, maybe this one should go on top. And... Pair this together. Hello. Um, should be okay, but... I just need all of this IO stuff to go to the side. Oh, 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 is this a, oh, that's a hook. Oh, okay, look at that. That was really easy. That's a hook. So uh, what I'm doing now is like twist tying uh, the, both of the power cables together so that they don't fling around. So at least uh, my job here is actually easier. Uh, 
Damn it, stay still. Uh, uh what? Uh, what? Well, I guess this works. Okay, very good. So it goes down like this. And I need it to terminate uh, here. Where the pins is facing that way. Uh, no. Not this. What? What the hell? How would I spin this? Huh? No, it's not this way. It's not that way. No. Nope. No, no, but there's sort of a new feel. Strangle the door, uh, 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 uh. nothing to break there. There's a lot. I need to spin you correctly. What the hell? The, what? I can't. I'm more like I have no idea how to like this. What the fuck? Uh, I guess that works. Uh, hi. uh okay okay i see looks like it will work but it will be better if it's behind the two ah behind the 24 pin one okay nice ah it's back breaking work man Uh, there we go. There we go. Three, three. Nice. 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 Is this on the song? What the fuck? Right. So, you guys can see, uh, now the cable is being routed on the top. Now here. Go through the back of the uh, 24 pin one, the fat one, and uh, goes below and then come back up again. So uh, keep this straight. Yeah. Well, obviously, there'll be more cables going on here. So uh, for now, this is like tentative, especially when I have all of this to, to uh, do. Oof. Oh well. Uh, let me see. One is US. No, this is the front header. USB C, USB. No, this is HD audio. USB. Ooh. So the front is only USB 3, which is this. USB C, which is this. Uh, uh, these are the front headers, like your reset switch, your, your, your power switch, your uh, LED. Yeah. Uh, but from the looks of it, this thing does not have a reset button. So if you take a look at this, uh, if you can see, uh, this is as much as I can go, man. Yeah. So it only has the uh, power switch, the hard disk LED, which this thing does not have a hard disk, but it has a SSD, so I guess it works. And also power LED. And then that's about it. You can't restart this thing uh, with a restart button, but uh, most of the time these days, uh, you wouldn't even do that. So it's fine. I just need to route this properly. 
USB C one is around the middle, so its hole will be different. USB three one is around the same area, so they go to the same postal code. I'll just chuck them in. So front IO is around the bottom, so I'll just route it below. There's a hole below. Yeah, there we go. And HD audio, which is the front panel I audio which is only one hole so i'm guessing it's supposed uh it, it supports like four pole okay so audio is at the back there ah uh. And you will be wondering like how am I supposed to pass the cable over, right? So there is this one like little compartment below the power supply and there's a hole behind that. So I can just pass it in. So you see, uh, I'm not doing any magic tricks here. I'm just like, you know, passing the cable down. Yeah, so we can go like this. That should be all. Uh, the other one would be uh, the power for the graphics card, which I will install later, once this thing is done. But uh, I have determined which ports will be the best to do this. Uh, I'll just do it one by one here. But I need to hook this up because it looks neater. There we go. Oh boy. Uh, just to show you guys that I'm not like hiding anything behind or like some tricks here. So, uh, USB C and USB three. So there's two of them. Then the uh, HD audio comes out from the uh, bottom hole from from the back. Uh, the front I/O is is a little bit short, I think, but uh, it doesn't matter because the haters are right here, so that's fine by me. Yeah, all in all, this is actually quite a compact case. Although uh, this is a little bit long, I have to push back the excess to the back. Either way, uh, let's start with this. This is the easiest. Just follow the pinouts. Audio is this one, if I am not wrong. So just like that. Okay, come on, come on. Easy. Done. So that one is done. Oh, I'm, I'm having so much regrets right now. I'm having a regret because everything is running in front of the thick cable and it's not giving me access to the velcro strips at the back. So I wanted to uh, rub this behind. So I have to take it out, put it at the back, behind the cable. So, reroute time. Uh, this is okay. Front IO is here. Uh, I want it to be behind also. Which let's pack this up. Okay, so now it's behind here, and they will have access to the velcro strips which will be tightened down. So everything will fit behind here. Yeah, and then this one will just go to the back, same as always. No issues. Uh, this, this is actually quite a pleasant case to work with. Uh, not a lot of it, uh, restrictions, pretty good. And uh, a little bit of like, like just a lot of holes. Oh wow. Alright. See you there then, Junhan.
Right. So the intention is like trying to bundle all of the cables together onto the velcro itself so that it doesn't fling around. I know that's like a cable retention thingy, but it doesn't hold everything together. That's what the um velcro is there for. Right. Carry on, carry on. This is done, done. Well, kinda. Uh, audio cable is a little bit long, but I can just stop it below. It's no big deal. What's this? And the mahjong table is coming apart. I'm gonna need some sponsors for a new table. Hello. <laughs> okay. Once again, I know you guys can't see this, but uh, I'm just connecting the headers. Okay, man. Damn it. The writing is uh, facing this way. Power LED, power switch. Uh huh. Uh, positive is on the left side. Hey, where's the positive, man? E. Can't see anything, man. So, if you guys don't know, the positive is also uh, always on the uh pins itself but uh sometimes it's not marked that it's positive then you just need to look for the uh arrow so the one with the arrow is the positive it's usually on the back of the uh pin man i'm so confused so this is power switch which will go to where are you all right 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 and it'll spin you around, slot you in. Ah, ah, there we go. So, what's next? Cut this LED, which goes bottom, bottom left. What's the positive? Uh, it's just reversed. This is so disastrous. Right, the rest is power LED on the wrong which goes over there. Um okay. This is super disastrous. Because they do not conform. all right there we go all right so power power hard this and power switch is in oh there's only three things to plug in so uh not a lot all right connectors time uh usb oh why is this coming up 
Wait, what? Oh. I need some revamping here because the cable needs to run below. And it's a little bit long, so I'm just gonna pull it back and uh, reorganize it. So I'm employing the same strategy just to make sure that uh, all the cables are behind the thick ones and I uh, just push up the rest. So there's actually two. This is going to be like this. Uh. Come on, come on. Oh, effort, effort. Done. Okay. And USB C has a certain way to it, so I have to take a look. The short one goes on top. Uh, yeah, looks right. Woo! There's, there's a satisfying snap. I mean, click. Ah, okay, so almost everything is in. Uh, graphics card time. Well, it's a good thing that, uh, you know, graphics cards are lowering their prices in the market right now. Uh, but the new gens are also coming out, so, you know, decisions, decisions. I still feel that uh, if you don't feel like, you, you know, you really need one right now, you can just wait. It's fine. Man, this is backbreaking work. Uh, so what I have here is the uh, Asus Tough Gaming uh, OC uh, 3060 Ti. The moment you've been waiting for. Not oh, Penai. So this is going to be the last box that I'm going to open and also chuck it aside uh, today. I'm gonna hold you someday. Hold it. What? what? Yes. What was this? Oh, okay. Hey look guys, it's a box. In a box. Uh, come on, get up. Come on. Get up. Yeah. Okay. Oh this this design is actually pretty standard. Uh it's a box with some uh printing right here, just that this is gold. Or perhaps it's brass, but it doesn't matter. We're concerned with what is inside, not the box. Hope you guys are getting some like, you know, like, retail therapy from this. So, uh, new stuff, am I right? Alright, so 3060. Oh, this is a... Mm -hmm. I have no idea why they cut it out like this, just to verify, I guess. Uh, not really sure, but, uh, helps me in picking it out. Good foam, though. Uh... Oh, this is a pretty beefy cut. It's pretty thick also, as you can see. And pretty long. 
uh, used in the wrong context, uh, this is gonna be weird. Alright, so for the rest of the uh, box, it's uh, just more foam. This is for the uh, graphics card itself. And below it, we have some manuals. Uh, we have the speed setup. Do they give us a... Oh, there's a lot of stuff inside. So you have something like... Oh, oh you have some like collector's card or something. Yeah, just that uh, no one's trading it. But it's good to have. You can post it to your like, friends or stuff. Oh, hey, wow. Check this out. The Certificate of Reliability, man. It's not like these cards will die, you know, up and die somehow. But, uh, I guess it's a, a list of uh, what they have uh, gone through for their testing. Uh, there's also a warranty card here, but I believe uh, the warranty, you have to register it to some ASUS account. Uh, the rest of it is just a manual. Um, how to connect and all the stuff in many different languages. I think that's like that's, that's quite a lot of languages. Yeah. So with that, nothing much for the installation. Uh, nothing too crazy. Nothing too hard. Let's put this back in. Put this beneath the box. I will have to do some uh, consolidation with uh, all this stuff later. Study bag is good and cool though. Uh, I need a sponge. Uh, the reason why I chose this uh, model is because uh, the cooling is actually quite good. I'm all about cooling because people don't clean their PCs. So having good cooling uh, seems to be the most reliable for long-term users. But if the cooling solution is being clogged up, uh, I, I can't really help that much. So that's one caveat, I guess. Right, the graphics card. I again am not gonna install this, but uh, when the PC is in vertical mode, because I want to press it down. I don't want to you know, miss a line. So I'm not gonna do it vertically, so you guys won't be able to see it, so apologies for that, I guess. What is the first time I've uh, opened up a graphics card static bag that opens up from the top and not from the side? So you take out the card like a, I don't know, a piece of document uh, from a folder, I guess. Okay, first inspection. You have the aluminium backplate. You have the cooler, the front three fans, as opposed to uh, the usual like two fan setup. Uh, this is just extra uh, heat sink space for added cooling. And what what else do we have? What else do we have? Uh, I like the aluminium setup though, uh, especially when uh, aluminium is actually quite a good conductor of uh, uh heat. So you can code it from the back also. Uh, not really sure whether there's any uh, RAM, uh, RAM chips on the on the back, but uh, I'm pretty sure there might be. Uh, but I mean, don't take my word for it. Uh, RGB stuff is pretty much standard eight pin. Uh, power. So I only need one cable for that. So that's good. Uh, they also come with this a uh, little uh nice cover for the uh, PCIe slots. Uh, I, I do actually have a lot of these. Uh, it's just sitting somewhere else because uh, I've gone through a lot of uh, graphics cards. So yeah, 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 yeah. Anything else? There won't be mm, nothing much though. I just love the cooling solution that, that is uh, being provided on this card itself, the Tough Gaming. Yeah, because it's all aluminum setup and it's pretty hefty also. I mean, it's not as heavy as the ASUS Strix, but you know, it's it's still comparable. Pretty good cooling. And it's probably way cheaper than the strings. Yeah. Uh should I remove the plastic? Hmm. Should I? Should I? Yeah, screw it. I should. Because I'm gonna put this in anyways. Oh. What was this? Oh, they also have a plastic foam for the back. Look at that. Oh, nice. 
I guess this is a good addition to have because uh you know uh, current climate uh the the surface over here always gets uh, anodized or some some something like that. I don't know whether that's the correct word, but it will get uh oxidized. Yes, that's the word. Yeah, it will get oxidized and like looks rusty until you polish it or something. So that's a good thing to have. I don't think I want to remove that, but I would want to remove this because uh actually on second thoughts I can also don't remove this, but it just looks looks wrapped. Uh. Would it affect the performance? I don't think so. Oh, that's my client on this. Let me install this, check this thing out, and then uh well we'll we'll, we'll see how. Right, so the first thing is to check which slot will this thing take up so that I can remove the back uh back plate over there. So this thing takes up two slots, as you can see it takes up two slots. So I have to Put my auguration here. Okay, so it takes up the second and the third one. So I have to remove those first before I put this in. Yeah, this doesn't use uh, hand tight screws to remove the back plate. Uh, but it uses screws instead. Which is kind of sad because everything else is hand screws. Yeah, it uses the uh, same kind of screws that is being used for like the power supply. But uh, this is being tightened pretty hard. Should be machine tightened if I'm not wrong. Yeah, looks like it's machine tightened. Uh, would have preferred uh, hand screws. Because they're more wieldy. And pop goes the weasel. Okay. So we have removed the back plate. I will give this to the user. Just in case if they want to, you know, put stuff back. Let me just check the slots a little bit. Alright, it looks clean. Time to slot this in. Wait, what? What? What am I doing? Bruh. Why doesn't this go down? Interesting. Oh, it does. Okay, we got it. And just a quick check to make sure that everything is in place. Push this down further, make sure it sits and it sits. Good. Okay, make sure the back plate here aligns. Um, okay, looks good, looks good. Plastic is still in place though, just letting you guys know. Doesn't uh, affect the uh, performance of the cooling, I suppose. I like to keep things clean, you know. Alright, let's install this. Man, you guys are working at this hour, right? It feels like I'm also working. Mm. 
<laughs> the usual issue with like such a long cut or such a huge and heavy cut right is because of uh the, the, the sack. So if like like so for example let me spin this back up so that you guys can see what, what I was doing. So you guys may have not noticed if you guys uh have yet to upgrade your graphics card to a super beefy one. So uh the graphics card is also only hanged upon like the back and also the slot itself. So if this thing is way too heavy, it will start to sack over here because it's heavy and there's nothing to prevent it. So usually you will have like a GPU holder that will prop it up. Yeah, like like have a have a holder over here, or you can purchase one just to you know just prop it up so that it doesn't sack. Uh, sometimes if the sack is like too gradual or too heavy, it might damage the uh PCIe slot itself. Uh, but I do have a 3D printer here, so I can actually print out a. A small little like uh support over here so I can uh stick it in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not having fun. This is like a this is it's a hobby that pays. Right, so um so GPU site itself uh might cause an issue with like having some contact uh, issues with the PCIe slot. So you might be losing some signals. Because unlike uh because for the PCIe slots, right, there's like two sides of pins. Yeah. So you might have contact with one side, like the bottom one, but you might lose contact on the top because of the sack. So sometimes it will cause your video to like uh, cut out uh, suddenly or something. Yeah. Or when you are shaking this thing and then your, your video output just cuts off. Yeah. So that's one thing to note. I don't think this is heavy enough to warrant a support because yeah i don't think this is heavy enough i've seen heavier cards though like a strix card uh but this is not heavy enough so i'm not gonna have a gpu support here uh, i'm just gonna connect it up with the uh, pcie power here oh take a look at this does it look good it's like it's all black and like gray and silver and yeah looks good so the RGB is going to ruin everything with this RGB. Just saying. I like more of a uh, clean build. Um, that you know, that is like low profile and you know, let its performance speak its worth. Discover it is within a shadow to forgive to make amends. But I know now. You let me look at this. Do they always branch off the two? Yes, they do. Which means this is gonna be a little bit ugly because this thing splits up so. I will have to do some magic here. Goes like this, and I have to flip it up like this, which means this part will be seen. Uh, I don't really think it's an issue. I just need to twist tie them together. Not an issue. Oh, another thing about uh, GPU side, right, is more for travel. Like, let's say, for example, if you are delivering this thing, or if you are taking this back home, right? So, um, during travel, there will be bumps and stuff, right? So, your cut will be, like, hanging on your life with the back plate and the PCIe slot. So, this thing will vibrate a lot. So, having a GPU support over here is nice to have. Uh, but you can easily mitigate the issue by not putting it in this orientation and just putting it in a, you know, laying down position so that the cut is vertical instead of horizontal. So, you know, don't make a problem for your own back.
Yep, there we go. So, 8 pin. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, because the pins are teachings. Okay. So I uh, twist it to the top. Uh, I hope this doesn't like. Uh, I don't want to run it through the bottom. It's gonna look ugly. Yeah. So I can run it through like the side or something. Where's the hole? Uh, do I want to go through the top, the bottom? I can go through the bottom. It's a little bit dumb because it cuts through the fans. So let me just try. I never cut through the bottom before because I think it's always dumb. But if it helps, then uh, I guess this is a learning point. We're all here to learn stuff, man. Damn, it's ugly. Can I go through the side? No, the side still looks ugly too, though. Nah, screw it. I'm gonna go through the top. Man, the top is like super busy, man. So many cables going through it already. Ah, the ah, nah. Flat cables, come on, do me justice. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, easy. Once you get a hit through, the rest is uh, easy. Except when you have to rotate it. Damn it, I have to rotate it. Yeah, there we go. Not that hard. Wait. Oh, that was the correct orientation. I have to re-rotate it back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, this might not look optimal. Oh, this doesn't look super optimal. Well, I guess this works. Uh, what do you guys think, man? You guys have a look. Let me know how it looks. I'm gonna tidy up in the back. Can't see Jack. Where's Jack? Uh, it's actually not on the edge. It's only like one leg out. Uh, the rest is still in. The most of the weight is still sitting inside, so the CG doesn't, you know, go through. So it's a okay. I know my safety. Safety, yes, safety first. Trust me, I'm an engineer. <laughs> Uh. 
I need a sponsor. Please help sponsor me, Sean. Actually, I don't think uh, I need a more stable table. I just need more space in this uh, in this storeroom right here. Uh, but I mean, it's not causing me not to do this thing. I'm still able to operate. It's just that there's a lot of hazards in the way. But uh, good news is I'm almost done. You guys can uh, uh, see the results of my uh, crazy labor here. How am I supposed to string this? What the heck? Okay, I need to spin this around and then uh, you can... Uh, wow, wow. Hey, send me via escrow. Uh. Alright. So if you guys don't have uh, any issues with the uh, weird cabling at the front for the GPU, uh, I'm almost done. It's just that I'm having some troubles because of my own uh, lack of foresight. Because I need to rock the Velcro around. And I can't see anything behind because there's no light. If anyone is like a surgeon over here, right, that would be crazy. Because this feels like what what it feels like. It's like I'm 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 fishing for a freaking vein. So all right so there's one last one which is like right below uh-huh uh-huh wait what 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 uh there we go there we go Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, so one bad part about this case is that you don't really have a lot of space for this management right here. Where's, where's the belt? What? Yeah, like I was saying. Uh, not a lot of space to manage down here. But you can always hide it with the uh, retention bracket later. Uh, not an issue. Not a, not not a big issue. Is it, is it all good? Yeah. Uh, ah, there we go. There we go. There we go. In hell. Yeah, let's put it in. Ah, no, no, don't lose it. <laughs> oh, help lah. Help la what beings Wait, wait, I can do this. What am I doing? What? More space, man. Oh, yes. Got it. Yeah. So the 24 pin one will be quite loose. But it will stay behind all of these secured ones. Okay, then the retention bracket will come on top of them and cover all this garbage. Which is not really that much of a garbage. It's well, it's all tightly secured. This one can be tighter. 
so what we have here is all rigged up uh yeah okay i'm just gonna say i have confidence that this thing will work so i'm just gonna put like the retention bracket back in uh the front mesh the top mesh not the glass because the glass is heavy uh blah, blah, blah. Still got what? the bottom fan filters and everything Why this no see in? Why you doing this, man? Alright, I'll screw you in first. Oh, and I just realized, right, there's a... Uh, there's more uh, 2.5 mm... Uh, SATA drives that you can actually put behind here. So there's two, but I don't think it's a very nicely placed because the cables for the power is gonna be weird yeah because usually the cables are daisy chain so if you want to do this arrangement it's a little bit weird okay retention bracket is in good boy Okay, this feels like the front one if I'm not wrong. Uh, it's also held together by latches. So how they do it is uh, they use screws if you can see. see. So screws right? Then they'll have like a, like a little hole over there. So you just need to slide it in and it will just catch. But the only bad part is if you, if you turn this around and if you have nothing on top everything will just slide out. So what are the chances of that happening am I right? Is it the wrong way? Yeah, no? 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 Oh, wait, no? Is it not flippable? Pretty sure it's flippable. There we go. Yeah, so this is one of the, the things that will stop it from uh, dropping out. So at the front here, it will prevent it from coming up. But if you don't have this, and if you want to throw it around, it might fall out. So, oh wait, I can't put this in without tempered glass. Steps, steps, steps. Wow, okay. I'm not going to put the tempered glass in. I'm just going to test the system first. I'm not going to put uh, both sides in first. I'm just going to test it first. Oh wow. Guess what? It started to rain. Make it rain. I don't really think I need to close the windows, so it's fine. Let me power. Yeah, yeah, my boy. Uh do take note that this is still on off. Where's 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 my HDMI? Yeah, don't take the wrong one. Alright, so this time I'm gonna go for the uh, graphics card. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so HDMI is in. Uh, this little cap for the uh, port, I'm gonna put it aside. I'm gonna stick it back in uh, once I take out my stuff. So, da da da. Keyboard. Key keyboard. Ah, yes. Ah, keyboard. Okay, I might need to close the window. Looks good, we're ready to go. Time to take flight. 
Where where is that? Oh wait. Yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Can I turn the power on? Oh yeah, of course. Of course. This is the on button, this is the on button, right? Yeah, there we go. Wow, oh. RGB. Okay, it's able to boot. Uh, I'm at the bio screen. There's a lot of uh, colors here which you're not able to see because on it's on the other side. Uh, I would say the uh, RGB is not that strong. It's mostly coming from the RAMs and the graphics card. Uh, let me try and turn this thing around and show you guys. After I turn this thing off. I don't have to use the uh, keyboard because I'm just turning this on and off. But all in all, this is a good build. We're done. I just need to pack up everything. And show you guys the... Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, oh. Wow, this is heavy. How am I supposed to turn this around so that you guys can see it? This is insane. I, I can't. I can't. I don't think I can. It's not feasible because the cable is not long enough. Uh, yeah. Oh, here's an idea. I can flip this thing around. Uh. Might need the bash top. Alright, safety, safety, safety. Alright. And oop. Alright, never thought you guys would see the day where you see a topping computer, right? Oop. Alright. You know what's the stupid thing? The on button is on. Yeah. There we go. Okay guys, experience the RGB. I uh, hope you like this. Uh, yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I would say though, the uh, RGB for the graphics card is actually quite minimal. Uh, it doesn't like span the whole entire thing as compared to like Strix uh, uh, graphics cards. So it's only like, it's an accent over here but the um the rams one is actually causing much of a uh, lighting within it so it's uh, actually lighting up quite like most of the case itself like you can see like some of the reflections going on here uh and there's no uh control over the rgb if you don't install the software i think so you're pretty much stuck with this unless you install the software they will control this so yeah all in all if we turn off the uh, rgb here and here this thing will most likely be a, a stealth build in terms of like you know causing any lights but uh let me off this and let me package this thing up soon <sighs> bada bing bada boom i have to remember how how did i spin this around Safety. Alright, so we know that uh, we can start this up already. I shall switch back. And uh, what do you guys think of this build? I mean, this build itself, not the building process. The building process is tedious. So uh, you guys can uh, share with me what you guys think. I'm changing back to the... Yeah.
What? Off lights and foot mirrors? No man, this is not a showcase like showcase piece. I don't live in a showroom. <laughs> Yeah, but um, okay, I'm not gonna peel off the plastic film on the tempered glass because, I mean, the only thing that it does is you, you can see the inside. Okay, um, anything else? I can close this up. Pop, 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 pop. Right, let me slide this in. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? What is this? What is this? Yeah, this thing keeps popping out. I don't know why it's not catching, but I think this is part of the design because it doesn't have like the tracks up here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have the tracks up there, no wonder. But other than that, uh, there won't be anything pushing onto this uh, face because of the retention bracket over there. So uh, all is good. So this side, hand tight, hand tight. Safety first, off the power. Uh, Wi-Fi will be uh, these two antennas. Uh, I'll just need to uh, screw it in. But uh, shouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, tempered glass, I will have to remove this. Because this is the only one uh, point of failure. Well, it won't fail because this is also locked in the same way. Yeah, so it slides in also. So if you don't slide it out, uh, everything else won't fall out. So it should be fine. Oh, fuck. Eh. Well, the good thing is uh, you can uh, handle this on the side. There's actually some foam pieces on the side. Uh, not sure whether you guys can see it. So on this side, it's actually foam. On this side too. But on the top, it's actually metal. Yeah, this is metal. So whatever is contacting the case, uh, in terms of securing this thing, it will be metal. And everything else uh, on the sides, it will be foam. So that, you know, you don't smash tempered glass there. And the tabs wise, this should be this orientation. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Now we are secure. I like that the uh, tempered glass is uh, screwless. Um, I'm also a bit uh, insecure about the screwless feature of it. Give and take, I guess. Come on, come on. Right, so, hand tight, hand tight. More or less all packaged properly and nicely already. Uh, I will still have to install the OS after. But all in all, this is uh, what you get for the whole building session, I guess. Oh, this is gonna break my back, man. Alright, there you go. Hey, come on. Actually, with the plastic film, right, you, uh, sometimes I would recommend people not to peel it off because you'll get all your fingerprints on the glass itself. So it's good to have this plastic film. Yes, it will look ugly on the sides, but who actually cares, right? Uh, you can still look through it. Uh, it's not those kind of uh, foggy uh, plastic film. So you can still look through it. You can still see like what's what's inside. So if I turn this thing around, you guys should be able to see what's inside still. Uh, without the reflection, so the, the light, you know. Uh, can I angle this like... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you guys can still see what's in, in the box itself. So, plastic film, not an issue. 
for the graphics card itself uh, plastic film is also i don't think it's a huge issue uh, you can just leave it in there it's not going to affect your thermal performance that much but uh, you'll be able to uh, you know boast to people that you you have such a big ass heat sink and uh, probably if you upgrade your graphics card you can also boost boost the same thing so either way uh, this is a nice touch actually yeah see looks majestic af bro it's about the thick boys the thick boys yeah but uh this attention thing to tell you to peel off the uh plastic film and you don't peel it hey that's called rebel bro you have to be a rebel right so i'm gonna put this hdmi plug back in and also the uh back plate uh for the graphics card i didn't peel it off and it's a nice touch because i don't want the uh back plate to uh, oxidize and i mean it fits in the case so i'm not gonna touch it yeah so in the long run uh, it won't oxidize and it will still look good uh, if you want to sell the graphics card off uh, a second hand after your warranty or whatnot yeah it's still a viable option so all in all this should be all for the building of it uh is this yeah so i've uh, only taken out one thing out from this uh whole desktop which is the uh, hard disk case which uh it sits on the side right now yeah so this hard disk case uh it's not really needed unless if you need a lot of uh, hard disk within your whole setup yeah because uh, at the front as i mentioned there's like two uh, slots for 3.5 inch uh, hard disk already so if you want you can just place it there this is actually quite heavy so i wouldn't recommend putting it in but if you want to isolate your hard disk to the back where you can easily remove it uh it's an option then you can just stick it at the back so not an issue I would still put this in one of the boxes. Yeah. So the rest of the time is for cleanup. So if you guys don't want to watch me clean up, which I I want to take my own time to clean up. So uh if you guys have any further questions or whatnot, uh you can post it here. I can answer them like last minute or whatnot while I'm cleaning some of the stuff up. If not, I will be ending the stream at 6. Just nice for dinner. Alright. And hope you guys have a good uh, dinner also. All the case stuff. I... All in all, this has been a pretty interesting build. Uh, I like uh, cube cases because they are more uh, manageable and more handy. You can pick them up easier. CG is pretty low. So it's good. Uh, maybe I should put this in a bag. Uh, what is this for? Oh, yeah. Oh, turns out I didn't use any of the, uh, uh, power supply Velcros. So I'm just gonna put it back. Right, so all of this is here, if I'm not wrong. I wouldn't recommend using a uh, zip ties because you can tighten it, sure. But if anyone wants to do some upgrading, uh, it's it's hell to take it out uh, because you can't take it out. You have to snap it. No, not snap it. You have to cut it. Yeah. And sometimes if you are not careful, you might cut one of the cables. So yeah, I wouldn't risk it. So no to uh, zip ties, but twist ties definitely. And I have a lot of twist ties from this operation right here. Which is good, I guess. And spare cables, spare cables. This is the case one. Oh yeah, I didn't see it, right? We're done with uh, the last box. The graphics card box, like so long ago. I was about to put the uh, static bag in inside it, so... Uh, missed opportunity. But never mind, I still can put it in.
Uh, it's a good time for me to consolidate all the other stuff into like one singular box also. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh wait, just put the saddle back inside the motherboard case. Might as well. But Bing, we are done with the last books. Is the GPU books? Ooh. Okay. Uh, consolidate. Uh, uh. Uh, let's flip this around. Let's put the documents inside. Oh hey, I saw one. Yeah, there we go. So uh, for those who are still watching, I uh, just want to hope this has been an enjoyable uh, journey through building this computer. Uh, hope you guys have uh, as much uh, fun and backbreaking stuff uh, as I do. Uh, this thing is actually quite heavy. I didn't expect this to be this heavy. Because uh, I expected the the case to be built of aluminium, but it doesn't feel aluminium, it feels more like steel. So, uh, it's obviously going to be heavier that way. Okay, okay, I can just put it at the top, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, oh, I can just consolidate. So there's a lot of spare parts over here if you want to install. This is from the case, by the way. So if you want to install like any uh, hard disk onto the uh, desktop itself, into the case, uh, there are spare parts in here where you can just take from and uh, install it. Anything else? Oh yeah. No, I'll just keep that. Extra fan screw, I'll just nip. There we go. Uh cool stuff like this. It's good to keep. Just in case. Uh this is also for the case. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna, I don't think it's gonna fit for the case. So I'm just gonna put it in the mother motherboard box. So anything else? Where can I put that? Hmm. Oh, I'll put it in the uh, power supply box. Yeah. Hopla. Alright, so all the spare stuff will be here. Spare power supply cables will be together with the power supply box. That's how I usually pack things. Oh no, we got this. Uh, uh, never mind, I'll just put it together with the power supply box. Oh. Oh. oh no. I did the same thing again. Hopla! Hey, what's this?
Oh wow. Oh wait. Seven space for me. Oh, this thing might not have space. Oh no. 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 Might have to take out the foam though. But it's somewhere else. Oh. Oh, it fits nicely. Uh, where's the other thing? Does it fit? Does it sit? It will fit, and it will sit. It sits. Uh, I'm not sure where to put this. Is it high enough? Eh. Uh, doesn't fit that well, so probably not gonna force it. I'm just gonna put one of it, probably. Hey, one of it fits. Nice. So, the rest of it we'll put somewhere else. This feels like packing for a vacation. Nice. Oh, hey, look, it's uh, 6 already. I said I wasn't going to be like dull already. But uh, I'm still packing stuff, so... We shall see. Uh, damn it. Uh, I'll just put it together in the motherboard. No, oh, no, this is power supply. So... Uh, put it here. Nice. Manuals and stuff is inside the motherboard. Come on. Come on. So everything else, uh, for warranty purposes. Let me see if I can fit everything in here. Oh, everything fits. Alright. That is amazing. I mean, look at that. Everything fits. Hot oh, damn. Alright, so if that's it. Oh yeah, there's the extra thing. Uh, I'll find somewhere else. Put that. Oh uh, no, the Intel one doesn't fit. It doesn't fit that well. Uh, rearrange. Uh, probably. Yeah, it fits. Okay, very good. Uh, oh, oh, this one. I'm not supposed to fit the foam. Oh, I can fit it inside the, the case. Ah, oh, nice. Got him. Very good. So, uh, for anyone that is still here, uh, I do recommend this uh, cooler itself. Like, what you guys see within the uh, build itself. It's a pretty beefy heatsink. Uh, good mounting. Um, oh, what else can I say? I mean, it's just, you know, it's thick enough and uh, it has enough thermal density to uh, bring out the heat from the CPU and uh, channel it out of the case itself. So I think it's a pretty good investment for something which is around like 60, 65 ish. Uh, you can get it cheaper if you shop around and if there's any deals. But it's around that price range. Um, all in all, it's a pretty worthy buy. Uh, and it's not going to degrade. It's not going to spoil. The only thing that's going to spoil is the fence itself. But fence itself, you can just, uh, you know, replace it anytime you want. Okay, so this is done. I'm not going to pack up the uh, desktop that far because I need to install some other stuff. So... I'm just gonna do some rearrangement and I think uh, we can call it a day. Uh, 
Alright, right, mouse, mouse, mouse. Oh, how many of you guys are still back in here? Oh, it's only me. Oh, well. Alright, so, uh, if anyone is uh, re watching this, I uh, hope you guys have a fun time for this five hours. And, uh, see you guys next time.